I'd like to start this off by just saying uh, thank you if you are looking at or watching this video right now. Uh, the channel just hit 2,000 subscribers. Hooray! We did it! Very long time coming. Anyways, uh, on with the show. 3, 2, 1. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the BNR stream today on this fine 4th of November 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week. We'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. What's up, Fetty? How's it going? Uh, yeah, no, the chaos week. It's always been chaos. Um, I don't know why. I think I've always signed myself up to, to chaos at work, but uh, where work is chaos, home and the hobbies are all chill, nice and fun. So I hope you've had a great week yourself and uh, we can dive straight into today's game because we're gonna be we're gonna be at it for quite a while. Let's see if we can do this real smooth without any like weird hitches. All right, here we go. I'm gonna have to hit play with my mouse and then hit the scene switch and the audio at the same time. Oh, nice and smooth. We're doing it! We're finally doing it! A long time coming. Uh, which is, uh, finally playing Metroid Prime- And I'll up the audio, because I know it's going to be a bit on the quiet side, so... Give me a- give me a grain of salt at some point when audio kicks in. I think the title is usually on the... On point, it should be a little- Yes! Uh... Okay, I- I- I do want to master the Retro Achievement set. I would say the timing is decently coincidental that it's finally out at the time that, like, I was gonna, like, play it. <laughs> well, the, no, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 Metal's, Metal's the name of the album. Echoes is just the name of the song. I, I actually, I really wanted to do Echoes as the, the name of the, um, the stream. Because then I can force people to, to listen to Pink Floyd Echoes as part of the, um, uh, the stream playlist. I actually don't have... Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, I don't even know what the word metal has to do with any of it. Maybe we should look into that, but, um, no, there's a lot of good Echo songs out there anyways. Uh, but no, this is Metroid Prime 2. Uh, as a kid, I had Metroid Prime 1, and then I immediately jumped to Prime 3, and I actually missed Prime 2 until I went back for it in 2009 or 2010. Went back and tried to get an old copy, and I was like, man, I enjoyed this one a lot more than Prime 3, somehow. Uh, but Prime 2 is, in my eyes, a worthy sequel. Is it necessarily an amazing sequel? I don't know. But, yeah, no, I, legit, the audio is very quiet, so I'm gonna absolutely flashbang the stream. I apologize so hard, okay? Uh, I'm just doing that just so I have a reference point. Um, I have audio volume. Yeah, it's on 50%. We can bump it up to, like, 85. Dolphin be like... Yeah, because otherwise that's gonna be so quiet and I'm amplifying it on the mix, so... <laughs> I should've- I should've saw that out. Uh, first of all, uh, the menus. Oh my goodness, the menus are very confusing. I mean, it makes sense, but it's like, what's, what's wrong with four options right now? <laughs> what's wrong with options? Why are we like this? Why are we like, you know, we gotta- we gotta rotate the thing around. Um, but Prime 2 is a very, very worthy sequel. I have three saves. We have beaten the game, we are halfway-ish on hard. And we're gonna play the game casually on normal. Yeah, a bit. Yeah, Smash has some very esoteric menus and places. Um, but yeah, no, I played Prime 2 last out of the trilogy. Um, and Prime 2 is, in my eyes, a very worthy sequel because it attempts quite a fair bit more than what the original game does while still holding on to a lot of elements that make the first game what, it, what works so much about it. It's got a few quality of life things here and there. And then it tries something. Is it successful? Not entirely. But it's very, very much still Metroid Prime. And it is doing some neat things in places. And I think that's probably where I'd summarize most of this game. We'll dive through. We'll check it all out. And uh, hopefully I'll show you some... Uh, maybe not routes, because I don't really know. Like, I've got a route. I'm gonna take a route, and we're gonna try and get all the scans and do all the, that kind of stuff. Same thing as Metro Prime 1, but unlike Prime 1, where it's like, oh, I know this whole game like the back of my hand, this one, I don't know like the back of my hand. It's been, I have gone through a couple of playthroughs already, so I've re-familiarized myself and acquainted myself with the game. I love that these, um, this intro, by the way, is using a full motion video, like, <laughs> the quality is high enough that you don't pick up on it, but it is a full motion video at some times. 
this intro is sick as heck, uh, even if uh, the ship does not like getting hit by lightning, I guess. Uh, but yeah, no, Prime 2, it ditches the prologue, it dives you straight into the, the experience. You crash land, straight on the, the, the planet, the planet Ether. Ether? 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 I think it's Ether. With an AE, so. Um, and we have a ship. This actually reminds me a lot of uh, the Metroid 2 ship. And out she comes. A design that stays quite faithful in the third game as well, but uh... It's a bit different to the first game's, uh, you know, style. I think as well you'll notice there's a lot, it's a lot clearer to see uh, Samus' face through a visor in many of the shots. And that's gonna, that's gonna be a fun kind of point to look at. So, Prime 2, uh, I mean, it looks just like Metro Prime 1, other than it's a circle in the bottom right instead of her hand. But otherwise, it really does look like a lot of the same game. We still have the scan visor, but you'll notice that objects now, instead of having a little symbol in front of them, the whole object is lit up. And that's a nice quality of life difference that lets you easily see what you need to be scanning. Like this ship, as well as also having percentages everywhere. Everyone likes percentages. One thing that's a little uh, annoying is, um, uh, lore logs, when you try to scan them, it says it's added to your logbook, and it forces you to hit start and just read it from another another section, but um, other than that, for the most part, it is mostly the same game when we start off, so the ship's been uh, damaged, but you can still save the game there. You can also see these pillars all over the place, a power grid, but something, <laughs> something broke them all, um, and we've got this thing over here, which is, uh, it needs some power. We don't know what this is. Uh, you can also scan this. Well, I'm gonna read out every single thing. We'll, <laughs> we'll get on with it eventually. But uh, this is just teaching you that, yes, you can lock onto things. Just like the beginning of Prime 1. And hexagon doors continue the way. Uh, we shall attempt to continue over here. But you'll notice there's this weird door in the way. It's got alien text. I don't know what's going up with that. So you're gonna need to update your, <laughs> your translators. And uh, I love how it points you down here in an attempt to observe this pit. So we've got a few things that we'll continue on with, but uh, mostly, uh, again, you know, teaching you about boxes. These are Federation crates as well. We didn't actually get to see the Galactic Federation uh, force. So, greetings, Blood. How's it going? Um, this gate is actually a thing you can scan as well. It's nothing really, you know. It's, it's got locks. So, aim up, shoot the, the locks. Same thing as the first game. But, uh... But we'll start to, I think... Mm, yeah, we'll see all the differences. We'll see enough differences as we go throughout the game, so... Uh... No, no. This is not going to be a two-week stream. Uh, two-week game. A three-week game, perhaps. And I feel very confident in having some uh, decently longer streams to make a three... Uh, we may be leaning closer to three hours. I felt a little bad because Mega Rates cut, cut short a little bit, but, um... Uh... I think we'll, we'll lean on the closer to three hour side. We'll definitely get there, so. Because I have a lot to say about Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime is a game that I can really talk about a lot. So, uh, map, it's the same. It literally looks the same, no sweat. You've even got a world map here, but, um, a lot of these map points are made a bit easier to spot, and that's quite nice. Um, sometimes. <laughs> I have some exceptions here and there. Uh, watch out, because here's our first enemy scan. This is the Worker Splinter. He, uh, generates webbing for a 2D. But you see, press start for logbook. And in here is a lot longer of a... Of a <laughs> writing for the enemy. And that might be useful at times. As well as also, you can actually see the 3D model. That's neat. Um, also, a lot of these dudes are hanging. How's it going? Died of cardiac arrest? Oh my gosh, Man of Medan has come back to me again. Um... Oh, this one's difficult. We cannot determine this one. Assault weapon. Killed by friendly fire. What's going on there? There is a lot of fun flavor text. And just like the first game, in fact, I'd say maybe a little more. They've tied this all together in a very, very nice and fun way. Um, we even have things like uh, this guy is dead here. He's got a, a lore entry. But you can see here it's like... Data transfer to logbook. It's like, oh, I just want to see it there. There's something wrong with the lock systems in this section. They failed twice, locking us out until someone came along to let us in. If it happens again while we're playing bait for those things, well, 
At least we'll go out fighting instead of hiding in the control area. Meanwhile, I was trying to press on this panel, but unfortunately, the panel's offline. We also got another guy over here. There's a lot of scans earlier on as well. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be lore dumped right at the beginning. Um, I don't like this plan. This hive is a small portion of a larger network. There may be dozens of hive systems like this across the planet, and they may all be linked. Destroying this one may buy us time, but it may also provoke the other hives into attacking. Uh, so yeah, we got this big long object here. This gate was once part of a cargo bay. It's been modified for security purposes. So we gotta turn into more fall to crawl under some things. Yeah, not all enemies, uh, well not all items or objects actually say things as well. So uh, we've only got those two guys in this room. We've just got our, our morph ball, we can boost. Samus proceeded to not bring her, uh, her um, you know, all of her energy tanks. Just think that's curious. How can, oh, how can Metroid crawl? Also the bomb slot, it's here right away. We do not need to read law for a bomb slot. Uh, bomb slots are a little more visually clear. You can see them a mile away in this game. Whereas there's some points in the first... I don't even think the first game is that bad, but... They're made quite different in this one. There's a lot of model differences that sometimes you're like, Oh, why is that different? But... Um, oh yeah, true. You can beat Metroid Prime without picking any up. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, this happens, by the way. We've got these dark troopers. Bias scans indicate terminated life signs in this trooper and the presence of an unknown biomass with parasitic tendencies. Through the Cooper's, uh, Cooper's, trooper's armor has been compromised. Uh, the bulk of it remains intact. Weapon systems remain online as well. Full parasitic fusion has yet to be obtained, resulting in low agility and response time. This is a bit terrifying right there. Right off the bat, look at that. Terrifying. Anyways, uh, yeah, no, these guys start to terrify you, but don't worry, they take one single charge shot. Unless you're playing on hard difficulty. This has dark. It's a, it's a drinking game. Take a shot every time you see something with the word dark in front of it. They are very creepy. The atmosphere is great. Like, especially as well. It's like, you've just, like, started off and you're just getting assaulted by, you know, previously dead people. They've, even, they've all got this, like, parasite thing going on in their face. Like, look at that. Oh, he's fading out. <laughs> uh, I'm not playing on hard now. Because hard will kick my butt. Hard will, like, legitimately, like... It does... It does... Drain on me a bit on this game. I'm not that good at this one. Uh, for the purposes of a stream, I guess, we'll keep it on normal. Because otherwise then the pacing's a bit like, oh my gosh. Boss is a... You know, a bit of a... Bit of a... A sponge. Um, the only thing hard really does is that you take a little more damage at... Well, a bit more damage at places and the boss... Eh, I think everyone has about like 50% more health. So these enemies would die in two charge shots. Or one one and a bit charge shots. Um, I'm currently working through a hard playthrough right now to get the retro achievement set out. but Or to play through the retro achievement set. Uh, I personally think the... <laughs> The achievements relating to beating the enemies within a certain amount of time get a bit aggravating, especially when there's enemies or when there's bosses not close to save points. But the worst one is the very, very final boss, because I think the time limit is just its too low. It is it is too low. Uh, normally seems to be a dimensional rift, target destination unknown. Like actually too low to the point of I think everyone has said you need to do screw attack spoilers um you need to do like exploits in order to basically force damage onto the boss in places where you're not meant to be dealing that much damage so we've jumped through this portal we've uh part particularized ourselves and uh we've ended up in this strange alien world this is actually a curious point i find because um we'll lean into this dark world mechanic uh more throughout the game but uh the portal that's here is only here for this very one moment. And so you'll never see this room ever again. This is a fun, dramatic moment, though, I'll tell you that. Basically giving you a cutscene representation of what's going on. This here is Dark Samus. You may remember Dark Samus from reaching out of the blob at the end of Metroid Prime 1, if you 100 percent it. Otherwise, you don't need to know anything, because that's, that's really much it. That's it. Also, these things. Also taking damage. 
or so she proceeds to shoot up for some reason, but then falls conveniently back into the portal, which closes behind her. Uh, and this is, uh, this is the same as getting shocked by the piece of, the, the bit of electricity in the, uh, the Orphean ship in the first game that casually stole many pieces of technology just then. Samus's suit is visually intact, but, uh, we have lost... <laughs> it's specifically stolen as well, it's not even, like, just there. So we specifically lost the space jump boots, which we just had. We lost the grapple beam, which we already had. We lost the boost to the morph ball. We lost the power bombs, which, uh, totally we did not just have. Uh, the missiles are gone. And the bomb is gone. Everything else is all good, so that means we finally have a game where we can at least keep with the, the various suit and the, um, the morph ball itself. But missiles being gone is like, oh, again? I remember there was a, a Newgrounds Flash animation where it's like Samus just falls over and all of her items just fall out. She's like, oh no, and they fall down a drain. Um, now, if you're, if you're a speedy boy, I'm not doing, I'm not showing you the speediest things, but there's a save point right here, which is always nice. Just like the first game, save points, save, and they also, uh, replenish your energy, as says on the tin. But they don't replenish ammo, which in the first game didn't mean that much, because all you needed was missiles and power bombs, but in this game, it means the world. It means everything. So, let's wander out the other door, and, oh yeah, also sometimes the loading screens are a little aggressive. Yeah, I know, right? Save points save, but in Super Metroid they did not heal, they they just awkwardly saved. That was it. Oh my gosh, the elevator will move when you enter the hologram. There is a lot of text as well in this one. You'll you'll start to notice that maybe there's a bit more reading. And now we're on the other side of that uh, little little gate. We'll get to that um, soon afterwards. Uh, this is still the same the same class gate, so don't worry about that. But there are some things that you can scan once you take out the panels, I guess. So, in particular, we have a bridge here. This bridge is useful. A girlfriend bridge, if you will, and not Galactic Federation. You can even scan this thing right here, which, uh, raises this one, this one bit. That's cool. There's actually a lot of these, like, fun little structures and walkways and things like that all around. But yet, we are blocked again by another one of these. But don't worry, it doesn't go everywhere. Uh, keep your eyes peeled on one of these because, uh... It's a splinter cocoon. And also, there's a green Crowley up there. And if you wait a bit, and you let these things pop out, then an actual splinter comes out. So splinters are like your little grunts. They're not too, too fancy, but uh... Oh, that's all good. That's right, we've got, a, we've got a good number of scans right off the bat. Now, unfortunately, they're gonna make you pan up. So just like the first game, hold R, and I'll let you aim up. So if you ever see me just stop and look up, that's because I'm doing that. Um, have you ever played the Wii version, by the way? Which is also, it was on the Wii U when you could buy it digitally. Um, uh, I guess you can look up and around all the time, which makes that game quite interesting. Uh, I think Haley's losing it. He talks to himself all the time, and he won't sleep. He almost shot me on watch the other night. I think he thought I was one of those things. I talked to the doc about taking him off the line, and he told me we need all the help we can get. That's true, but if he goes berserk and kills a bunch of us, that won't be very helpful. That, that is a good observation. How many scans are we? We're down to 5%, man. We're already there. There's a lot of these, uh... Morph ball sized tunnels everywhere as well, which uh, is always funny. Uh, got another one of those fancy things, but uh, we haven't had an introduction to where we're at. This is the temple grounds. There's a big temple right there. And this is the grounds. We'll observe more about the layout of the, um, the environment. We've got these uh, fun red doors, which... Uh, yeah. Exactly, this will be a 400 minute. That is actually a very on point estimate, probably. The scans will come a lot quicker. Um, again, we've got another one of these, uh, these, uh, doors, but, um, uh, scan this, uh, little control system and we'll reveal yet another. Oh, he got stuck. Man! <laughs> this machinery is poopy. Terrible machinery. Um, but yeah, easy. Bonk. <laughs> it's good fun. I love it. Um, 
But yeah, no, we'll probably uh, push her a bit quicker in the game later. Uh, these gates are stronger, and therefore you must scan them. Uh, we've also got a wonderful wall here. Keep that in mind for way later. Made out of Denzium. Hmm, I wonder what Denzium did before. As well as also another panel here, but this was not more. This is just clearance. Uh... Watch out, more creepy crawlies. Uh, fortunately, you don't have to scan the energy in this game. It's not required anymore. <laughs> um, so you'll see me sometimes not scan things when it's like, Oh, but you misscan that. I'm getting all the things that you need. We'll be making our stand here. The engineer tells me there's no way we'll get the ship's engines online. An atmospheric interference is scrambling our distress beacon. If anyone reads this, know that we did our duty and fought well. You can actually uh, launch the distress beacon by scanning this. This is a fun little cutscene. It's actually, I think it's completely optional. I don't think the game cares at all if you do this or not. I mean, it looks like it's doing something, but then, you know, you, <laughs> you go, oh, nah, it failed. The atmosphere is too strong. Uh, these guys also come back to life, but, um, you know. I got places to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's going to be quite a bunch of times where it's like, yeah, you really don't need to fight the enemies sometimes. Uh, this is a, tu a turret. Everyone likes a good old turret. It's not too strong. Also telling you the fun mechanic of pulling power-ups towards you. As well as also we've got another gate that is uh, in the way. You could scan this power or this panel, but uh, something's in the way. Uh, good thing we've got little holes everywhere. As well as also more lore, which I shall read out right now. This is ridiculous. I can outshoot half the men here, and I'm stuck on monitor duty. I didn't join up to stare at a hollow screen. This wouldn't happen to Samus Aaron. She'd be out there taking care of business, not pushing buttons and sending reports. That's the joy of being a bounty hunter on hire, aka being a contractor. <laughs> Life's good until they don't hire you. Also, uh, good old door. But yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's Metroid Prime 2. It's, it's a lot like Metroid Prime, and I think it doesn't look like anything's that different. And the only thing that is different is, uh, cutscenes, which is a handful earlier on in the game. But we'll get there. We'll get past these cutscenes. Also, uh, hi. It reminds me of, there's a, there's a game cover, what is it called? Haze? And it's got the same thing, a guy with a, like a suit with a visor on the front, but it's cracked. You can see his eye. I think that, that game has the same cover. Date cycle. That's a long bit of reading, but sure. Also, Heracles with a K. While on patrol in the Dasher system, we engaged an unknown space pirate frigate. The f enemy frigate was crippled and it crashed on the planet Aether. We followed the pirates, but our ship was damaged by a storm as we entered Aether's atmosphere. There they go. Thank you, early squad. Heavy magnetic activity during the storm disabled our comm systems. Upon landing, we split into two units, one to set up an... Uh, I didn't read that in time. Each unit was doing fine, no problems. Until they appeared. That's that's the real accent this guy has. The flood. Yeah, the flood. The was it? There's, there's so many like swarm type. What's what's the the Starcraft one? The Zerg. Also a bit of voice acting. Hmm. Yeah, Tyranids. There are a lot of them though, I'll tell you that. I don't think you'll ever be fighting this many dudes. <laughs> Maybe it's like, we, we can only have so many per person. These guys are only able to take out like two at a time though. But also, rip all of them. And these are some big bugs when you think about it, they're like a meter long. That's terrifying, imagine a spider is like the size of your computer monitor. Oh, good thing he typed in the password in time. 
Also, I love this uh, this uh, white noise cut. <laughs> That's good fun. So. But yeah, rip, rip this laddie. Uh, this may be some of the densest reading in the whole game when you read out all of these dudes. I'm beginning to think it was a real bad idea going down there. Reeves is right. That hive is just one of many. It's stupid to stir a hornet's nest, especially if you plan on sleeping under it. Uh, yeah, we've actually got like quite a lot of <laughs> lore messages around here. Man, I hope that is the only breeding ground for these things. If there's more, we're in big trouble. We had a hard enough time taking that one out of commission. I almost ran out of ammo. I never run out of ammo. There we go, some more. Bruder lost the bet, so he switched watch duty with me. I figured this section is nice and safe and boring, which suits me just fine. Let those other pugs guard the hot zone. I Hold on. Hey, hold. Not It's text, but it's not text. Text to speech. Or speech to text. I hear them everywhere. They're coming. Can't sleep ever. They'll eat me. Eat. Okay. Very ominous. Very, very ominous. The Sarge says those splinters remind him of some killer bug he saw on another planet once. All I know is the things are fast and take a lot to drop. Pretty soon we'll have to go to bayonets. Everyone's low on ammo, even Brody. And he's the stingiest grunt I know. I also got another one of those uh, translator things, but uh, can't deal with it. Uh, anyway, shoot this box. Missiles are in there. <laughs> easy money. Very easy money. Uh, but yeah, as you pick that up, um, a bunch of these dudes show up. <laughs> so these are specifically Dark Splinters. Take a shot, we've done it, we've done the first one. Uh, Dark Splinters feel like they have like double the health. They get annoying. This is why I was like, yeah, I don't want to play on hard because this gets annoying. That's the whole point of hard difficulty, but uh, for a stream it's like, I don't think people want to watch me just constantly like, you know, <laughs> stalled by enemy, taking my sweet time. They're not too bad, just get some charge shots and you're all good. Um, I like how this ship, you can actually... Yeah, uh, it's a hard difficulty in the sense of, well, okay, sure, it's hard, but... I don't think it's hard in terms of, like... What's the term? I don't think it's more fun to make it hard. I think the game's pacing is probably evident for most of its fun. And figuring it out for the first time is sort of like it anyways. Anyways, more map. Most of the maps don't actually unlock the whole area. Uh, although this does. This actually shows you basically everything else. So, uh, this is the whole temple grounds. You'll notice that there's this big kind of central place with three elevators connecting it. Uh, we could not go into this first one, but we definitely can go into this one. So, we'll head into that. Um, I also like how you can look at every single one of these chairs and you see the names of all the people in the chairs. How ominous. A bit sad. Yeah. Legit, every single one of these has his name. They put in a lot of nice little details here and there. Um, there's even a little uh, captain's chair here. Pilot's chair. Very nice. Um, anyways, take the jump over. And uh, we're next to the door here. This is a fun little... This is just a piece of powered art. This is powered art. Very nice. Scan this. And uh, this reveals a kinetic orb cannon. If you're playing the retro achievement set, you got to go through every single kinetic orb cannon in the whole game in a single session. Oh, I don't know why I couldn't scan it, but that's why I'm in the next room. <laughs> Very odd. Um, but yeah, shoot your way up here and uh, you're all good. I think that's also... Oh, there's a guy over there and I'm way far away. Actually, I'm not way far away because there's a little hidey hole. <laughs> okay, roll safe. Yeah, there's six people to scan in here. And uh, there's a door that we cannot look at just yet or go through. Last night at Chow, Angseth starts talking about some bounty hunter and how she blew up a planet full of space pirates. I told her I didn't believe in fairy tales like that, and she took it personal. I just find it hard to believe that one person took out an entire space pirate base. That's all. But if she wants to believe in the Samus or Bigfoot or Santa Claus, she can. That's kind of fun that Samus has her own, like, mythos and fan club. So... Uh, anyways, head through the red door, which we now can use missiles, so now you know. And uh, head down the little hole. We've got these uh, war wasps in the way, as well as also uh, actually scanning the kinetic orb cannon and uh, 
a wonderful scan just here. Which will allow you to get your way up. Uh, also, is there a dude? I thought there was an extra scan in here. I actually did think there was an extra scan. Oh, yeah, he's chilling right there and I completely missed him. Hold on. War Wasp, you're in the way, because that's going to really irk me. We will be back in this room much later, but I'm going to completely forget much later. If that's the case. Oh, no, I've actually forgotten that scan. Ah. Pain. Yeah, no, I am not going to... Oh! Skills. Skills. <laughs> I'm the only one left. Managed to get out of the hive. But when I got to the ship, everyone was gone. Dead. I'm heading for that alien building we saw earlier. Maybe someone can help me there. Wait, something's moving down there. Hello? And that is basically all the troopers. <laughs> That's all of them. They didn't get very far. Uh, okay, we're almost there. First of all, uh, you'll notice scanning this wall with the crack in it. It says that it's a little unsound. You can actually shoot a... Okay, you can actually shoot a missile at it and it cracks a bit. But that's not the whole story. You're gonna need to come down here and there's another orb cannon with a switch. Most of the orb cannons are off by default. There you go. Work your way around. I love the, the morph ball paths in this game as well. They're good, they're good fun. There's a dude chilling in. Hi, dude. What's up? He's been dead for eight cycles. Chemical present. We'll need to know what's going on there. But uh, this will take us to the temple. There are three temples in the temple, temple, temple. But yeah, no, uh, Prime 2 is a good fun game. I, I, I do enjoy it. Um, but yeah, not as much as the first game. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I could get into it a bit more. Uh, still more dudes. They're all dead. Oh, I forgot to- I forgot. Uh, going to options. Uh, visors. Uh, the hint system is off. We don't need it. We don't need the game to tell us exactly where to go. It's from the first game as well. Uh, keep your- Well, this, these are the- these are the worst enemies to scan. Yeah. Sand bats. Multiple. Plural. Uh, if you're lured by them, there is a save point right here, which is nice because there's usually a boss fight immediately afterwards. I don't believe there's really anything anywhere that's that cruel for the save points. They're usually very, very generous with putting them right next to where you need to be, so. But yeah, wander up and uh, we're in this nice little arena area. Also, hi there. I see exactly what you're doing. Oh, I just don't know what this is. I, I just don't know what this thing is. I wonder what it is. Getting ambushed by bugs in the first, like, 30 minutes of the game. Save point in a big open circular room in the next room. Yeah, what will happen? Samus isn't even, like, surprised at this point. Oh, but this happens. Yeah, the... <laughs> This game's probably a bit notorious for being a bit gamey at times. I think some of the world is a bit... It serves the game more than a... Uh, it serves this nice little just environment that you sleuth through. So, uh, yeah, there's like five of them. Wow, five of them. It's not too bad, but... I think you're probably done with shooting these little dudes. And uh, I think for the most part, we're actually done with it after these dudes. But how mean? They've trapped you in here. Someone is like, ah, oh, you know, he's got to he's got to destroy the bugs first. Uh, now here comes one of the most annoying parts of the game: having to scan. Oh, and he's about to jump right at me. But this is an alpha splinter. It's a big one. Uh, this is one of the most annoying parts of the game, and it comes up a few times. Uh, this guy actually is a bit cruel. I actually don't like him that much. And on hard difficulty, it's like, oh my gosh, hi there. You have to beat this guy without taking a hit for the retro achievement set as well. Oh my gosh. So once you hit him a couple of times, uh, this comes out. You could try and preempt some damage. Scan him again! That's right, take another shot. It's the dark version. We, there are a lot of enemies in this game where it's like... There is no... Like, there barely is a light version. It's just... That's the only alpha splinter in the whole game, and he immediately turns into a dark version. So if you miss the scan, good luck. Uh, he's not too bad. In fact, he's a little easier because he always jumps right at you as opposed to sort of trying to guess. 
I guess the darkness made him a bit dummy. But he shoots, so. But he also has a health bar. Does this count as our first boss of the game because he has a health bar? Probably. It's not too bad. You get there. You get there in the end. Turns out, uh, Sam is- Ah! Ah! He's glowing! Turns out when you def- <laughs> he, sp he spits, he does not shoot, that is true. Is spit not a form of shooting? You can scan this, uh, glowy ball. It's just unknown. Let's just pick it up! We don't know, it's a system alert, but it doesn't seem bad. Antivirus has said it's okay, so. Uh, wander directly forward, because every single door is covered by one of these, uh, translator things. I feel like shooting, or is shooting a form of spitting, or is spitting a form of shooting? I feel like spit requires, like, bodily functions, whereas shooting could be either. So... Wander up through here, and we we are greeted by uh, perhaps this game's most controversial element. It has hold on, get the it has cutscenes with dudes who talk to you. Do not be afraid. I am Yulmos, Sentinel of the Luminoth. Please listen and hear of our world's peril. Okay, oh, no. <laughs> that happened. Long ago, a cosmic object fell to our planet Aether, exploding with great force. A rift was torn in time and space, and a strange power flowed over the world. Uh, it was unknown, uh, it was unknown virus. Where once there was one Aether, there were now two. One of light and one of shadow. Oh, we use the other word. Each existing in its own dimension. It was the end of peace on Aether, for a new race was born that day on the Dark World. One filled with hate and terrible power. They are the Ing. Ing. The Ing are creatures of shadow and darkness, knowing nothing of peace or mercy. For decades we stood against them, yet we now lie on the verge of defeat. When Dark Aether, take a shot, was born, a planetary energy was divided, half for our world and half for theirs. Should one world gain control of this energy, the other will perish. Oh, he's coming at me. He's coming at me. Doesn't even need to walk. He's a powerful lad. Before you arrived, the Ing had stolen a device from us. One that collects planetary energy. With it, they have weakened our planet to the verge of collapse. But fortune smiled on, on, upon us this day. For the energy transfer module is now bonded to you. With it, you can help us. Help us restore our world. You're our only hope, Samus. Should we fall, the Ing will look to the stars for new planets to ravage and conquer. Your species could be their next victims. The Ing have taken our energy to three temples on Dark Aether. Find these temples and transfer the energy from them to our own. I have updated your map system with the location of another temple. There is knowledge there that can help you on your way. I have also updated your translator module. You can now access devices and doors coded with violet holograms. Many lands are now open to you. Prepare well for your journey. The Ing now know you possess the energy transfer module. They will try to recover it at all costs. Return to me once you have restored the energy to a temple. I will aid you as I can. May the light of Aether shine upon you. You always say that. But uh, yeah, no, so this is Humos. He is a dude. He is so powerful, you cannot kill him. You cannot defeat him. Um, but yeah, no, he's chilling. He's standing there. He has a research item as well. We also have this big uh, energy controller. Um, the whole, I guess, point of the game is that this will be the central place for three, count them, three temples around the game. And also, we can translate these purple uh, laws. It is told that the Luminoth were not born of Aether, but of the stars. In the early days, we roamed the greatness of the void, bathing in the glorious light of a thousand stars. We met a vast number of enlightened minds, the Inkrin, the Yila, and the Chozo among them. Oh, I know those. Each of them we found 
We had claimed the homeworld and formed a deep bond with it. In time, we decided to do the same. So I love how they immediately spell out, uh, yeah, these guys are friends with the Chozo. That's why they have hexagonal shaped Samus doors and round morph ball sized holes everywhere. And the technology just casually works with a suit because literally the neighbors are good fun. And also, I don't believe this planet's actually like that far away because I'm, I'm pretty sure, did Aether get mentioned in the first game? So anyway, we can now translate violet modules, which means that this door is now open. The translating modules thing, I think is a little, a little aggressive sometimes. It's like it's in the way, but not sure. Uh, we've got these little light flies here. I'm sure I'll walk past them, but they'll zap me for a bit of damage because I'm lazy. <laughs> We, we will spot some recycled enemies from time to time, but uh, head through here and we've got another elevator which leads us back down. Um, the, the Great Temple is not particularly that big. In fact, it's really just three hallways, so don't feel like uh, it's really that vital. It's mostly there to just get around the, uh, the temple grounds quicker, because instead of wandering through a, f uh, through a few rooms that are probably closed off to us now, we could just casually scan this module and uh, realize that we're back out in this earlier room. You know, the one with the thing that dropped down. This one. That's all good. You may notice a few rooms also chilling that uh, we haven't gone into. We couldn't go into this one. Don't worry that it's a blue door. But our goal is actually... Hold on. Even better. Because didn't you must say he's plotted a thing on the map? I guess not with the hint system off. Okay. Uh, keep your eyes peel... Oh. Don't worry, it's just bugs. Keep your eyes peeled uh, for uh, missile doors like that, or really anything that you can access, because uh, like all Metroid, it's like it rewards the people who explore and notice that there's a missile door, because our first energy tank is in here. It takes a while to get the first energy tank in um, Prime, but this game is like, nah, man, you're going to need the energy tanks. So you're going to be kicking yourself if you miss that. We still can't do anything there, don't worry. But wander back a room, and we've already been through here, so... Through... The corridor. So where do we connect out to? Well, we're up here. But you remember, there was another translator thing in front of this door. You can actually, uh, use the... Uh, open that one door that was further back as well. But that just literally connects to where the ship is. So, you don't have to go back there. We've also got another scan of another dead Luminoff. This one is actually real important. Note how it says Key Bearer Law. Tap on the nose right there. Final entry, Warrior J. Fmm. Their army swells. Beasts and rogue machines join the ranks of the Horde, all eager to bring death to the Luminoth. The Ing sent these new additions to the industrial site to do battle with me while they watch from safety. Cowardly mongrels, my only regret in death is that I did not live to see the day of their defeat. May it come soon. This industrial site. Hmm. We're in an industrial site right now. Keep this in mind. That's a very, uh, like, cheeky clue they've chucked right there. And it's it's put right in front of you as well. You will not miss that scan. Unless you don't realize that's a scan. Um, we're almost to the end of uh, the Temple Grounds already. At least, well, somewhat the end. Uh, there's actually a missile expansion chilling back here as well, so... Uh, fun fact, there are not 250 missiles, there's 255, because one of the items gives you five more missiles. Uh, take a peek around this wall, uh, on the right, there's <laughs> one cheeky little lore here. Our search for a home took us through the cosmos, for many a great cycle we roamed, yet a place to call our own eluded us. In time we begin, we began to despair, feeling the search was in vain. We considered remaining among the stars until a scout returned with news of a world unlike any other. When we beheld Aether for the first time, so great was her beauty that we forsook the stars forever to live upon her surface. From that day forth, the Luminoth were of Aether, our blessed paradise. I think someone's going to get very annoyed that I keep mixing up Aether and Aether in the same law statement. But, uh, yeah, no, this leads us to our first environment. Most of the, in fact, all three of the neighboring worlds. It's only three. Dark Aether, oh yeah, we, we've already done Dark Aether, so it's okay. But all of the neighboring, um, worlds are about the same size each. Uh, and we'll generally be sticking in each one, um sort of scouting out most of it before we uh, move on to something new so uh, we've got lumites here and this grass grass is <laughs> definitely worth scanning uh, open the door 
we gotta have an establishing shot, right? So, welcome to the Agon Waste. It's not the Chozo Ruins because it's not really ruins, it's mostly waste. They built a few things and then they gave up real quick in this place. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, if you want to start off in a desert area, now you can. You'll notice that there's uh, different colored doors as well as these things. Um, that is a very dangerous name to say out loud, so I'm going to avoid that one. Um, now, if you want to be cheeky, actually not even cheeky, just head through this missile door right now, and you'll head into this room with a save point. There's actually a bit more to do in this room, as well as another chance to scan the sand bats if you missed them before. But, uh, you don't have to come into this room, because, uh, even though you can maybe see on the map... There we go. You can see on the map it actually connects out to another side, but we can't go that way, so don't worry about that. Instead, we need to head to the door to my east right now. The way we do that is we just jump up and uh, navigate <laughs> clockwise around this room, around the perimeter. We got these fun little bits where you have to missile them down. There was like a couple of them in, uh, in the first game, but also these bats, which kind of get annoying. Now, if there's one thing I feel like this game has a, uh, what's the term? I don't think it's quite as good, is the music doesn't stand out as much. It's much more atmospheric and less with the, the jams and the vibes. You'd have these various synthy tracks like the Fendrana Drifts music and the, uh, even the Talon Overlord would have a bit of a, bit of a jam going on. But here, a lot of the soundtrack is just much more sullen, much more quieter. Uh, we can't do anything about this. But keep it in mind, because, uh, you may want it. Head into this room, and we'll be greeted by... Oh my goodness, the space pirates, they're back, they've even got the same music. Uh, they look very different, I don't know why <laughs> they actually look different. They're standing upright a lot more. Um, yeah, they're like jumping on the walls and stuff. Um... When I mentioned that the Retro Achievement set has some annoying boss fights that are a bit far away from the save points, this is one of them, because uh, in order to retry this boss that's coming up, you gotta wander through this room. As well as also do those jumps. Those jumps get annoying. Um, we've also got this enemy chilling here, called the Brizgy. I like him. Don't go through that door, it's not where we need to go. You'll actually kind of get a bit caught out because you do wander the wrong way. But um, if you've got the clue that says where the temple is, then um, we'll probably be pointing you to head north right here. So, yeah, another one of these these things, and then uh, I'll shoot that down. So, there we go. You're gonna need some health if you if you need some, I guess. Uh, keep your scan visor out. Also, stand in the trees and blind yourself. Ooh. But uh, we've got our our favorite enemies, the shriek bats. They're mostly the same, except they're very purple this time, just to make it clear that they're still there. Anyway, here we are, we're at the temple. It's actually not that far away when you think about it on the map. Like, it's a couple of rooms away, but it's not too bad. Wander into this circular arena, which totally doesn't look like a boss will show out of nowhere. Oh no! If only this... Immediately scan this guy, by the way, because uh, this is based on time. The alpha... The alpha version of this guy, whose name I will not mention. Um... Again, you could fight him, but it's purely based on time when this thing comes out. And it's just like, why bother understanding how this enemy works when he only appears here and then immediately is replaced by, you know, the dark version. Or is it? It's the bomb guardian. This is another thing I'm, I wish the game did a bit better. Some of these lame... Oh, it's a bit stuck there. Some of these names are a bit lame. Uh, this guy is kind of annoying because... He takes exactly a full charge shot, and then a single shot afterwards, to like, unsun him. And uh, it always feels like it creeps just ever so slightly far away from you, so... And it's not available all the time to hit him, so you just have to deal with this, but it's not too bad. It takes... yeah... Uh, actually, does he take three or four charge shots? I remember taking three in some practice sessions, but not too bad, just so uh, keep your distance and strafe around him. And then, 
you know, what's the... I guess... I do like how these enemies hoarding some of your weapons use the weapons against you. Here's this, like, oh, you know, it's a worm, and suddenly, oh, it's a worm, and it drops bombs and spits bombs at you. Or shoots bombs at you. Um, but there we go, we finally got the, the Morph Ball bomb again. That's all cool. And we're only 50 minutes into the stream, we're not, like, too far off. <laughs> Probably grabbed quite a, quite a bunch of items in this uh, first stream. So, the Morph Ball bomb is exactly like you'd expect it is. In fact, you could even scan this and it'll even tell you Taloric Alloy, which is interesting that we're not on Talon 4, but sure. Um, Taloric Alloy is weak to bombs, so just do that. Wander forward, and uh, we will find this cool structure here. I guess it's quite clear what it does, but uh, every single one of the temples is uh, blocked by this security station, and the security station purely serves to waste your time. This could have just been a hallway I just walked straight through, but no, it's, it's, uh, <coughs> it's doing this. But, uh, but yeah, nah. And we still gotta hit a loading screen, so I wander over to here, and we are greeted by another energy controller. Okay, but look behind him, and, uh, well, this guy's seen better days. One and a half Decker cycles ago, you could have just said 15 cycles. Definitely went out fighting. Scan his little uh, projector, and uh, well, there he is. If you're reading this, then I definitely went out trying. Welcome, I am Aisha, sentinel of the Agon Temple. This message survives my death as guidance to the one who would fight the Ng. A portal to Dark Aether lies nearby. With it, you can travel to this land's shadow. You must locate a dark temple, a twisted mockery of the sacred place. Inside, you will find the energy controller you seek. <laughs> Thank you, yes. You could add a lot of words to the end of Ing. Dark Ing. Ooh. The temple door is held fast by three locks. The keys for the locks are hidden throughout the dark land. Your search will be difficult. Even the very air of Dark Aether is dangerous and can cripple the strongest of warriors. In our past struggles with the Ing, we placed a series of light crystals throughout their world. They remain today. The crystals create safe areas that will protect you from the harmful atmosphere of the Dark World. I have updated your translator module. You can access devices and doors coded with amber holograms. More lands are open and explore. Holy crap, what a guess that I would be able to, like, receive your translator module. When you are taking the energy from the Dark Temple, return here at once. That's an order, by the way. May the light of Aether serve you well. What a nice chap. But, uh, yeah, definitely the, um, the whole, like, guessing that the translator module is directly compatible. Uh, maybe it's just universal. Maybe everyone's like, oh, we've got translator modules. Uh, check a uh, peek behind this wall. You'll find uh, an orange lore, which we can read. Aether's planetary energy supply reached a critical stage. If left unchecked, the energy would expire, bringing an end to the world. Our greatest minds devised a way to preserve and regulate the remaining planetary energy. The energy controllers. Everyone likes a good old controller. So... There we go. There's nothing else in this room, it's just the one, one more. And this is, <laughs> yeah, this is the thing with this thing, it's like, oh, I just want to, like, leave. I just want to walk out. But you cannot walk out. It's illegal. So, uh, but yeah. No, the, yeah, the, the bits of dialogue definitely get a bit in the way, but they only show up in the temples. And also the one, uh, the one, uh, you know, Galactic Federation gunship going on there. We don't need to worry about the war bus, we'll just keep walking on. Um, eventually though, you get a bit, you know, more of that Metroid kind of isolation vibe. You're wandering out into the unknowns, you're blinding yourself on the trees. Um, so there's a couple of things to do. First of all, I'm going to wander around to this door. Because we can, we can reveal the door. Why not? Oh, watch out, the sand does blow you down. Through this door, we shall find another missile. Very nice. Again, yeah, just like Metro Prime 1, there's 50 of these, so it constitutes half of your upgrades. Uh, now, 
the way to go is directly underneath me. It's that blue door that I skipped earlier. But I'm gonna wander back because I think if you're following along and you, you, you want to play along and you want to be like, oh, what do I get? Wander through here. This is, you know, a must-have on your first playthrough. Now that we've got the bombs, you can actually go through this orb cannon and shoot your way up and get another energy tank. And that's very, very, very nice early on to just grab that. I generally find the energy tanks aren't too cryptically hidden. They're quite clear there. But it depends how many are on the beaten path. Um, but certainly, this game will kick your butt if you're not picking up energy tanks. You can't even, like, pretend to, like, get through it. It's like, no, if you're not finding a good number of the extra goodies, you know, it might be a struggle. Uh, there's uh, two pairs of orb cannons here, so <laughs> for the achievement where it's, like, go through all 37 orb cannons, this room has four of them because there's four around the other side. Uh, there's a guy here, there's a missile here, don't worry, I'll... <laughs> I will come back for this. Because you really don't need to get it right now. Uh, anyway, fight space pirate troopers. They warp right in. They teleport right in. Um, this topic of, uh, I guess, writing got me thinking about how um, one thing that I feel... I saw a take on... Um, on a... Uh, also... You ready? You ready? We're going to take another shot very soon. We're gonna take another shot. Also, I like how they don't like this uh, spooky dark thing. And neither do I, because it makes these guys complete bullet sponges. Seriously, they're dreadful on hard difficulty. Take a shot, it's the dark pirate trooper. It's like a pirate trooper, but dark. But yeah, even if you want to like spam missiles, which missiles don't feel as powerful in this game. It's a bit disappointing. Um, they sure do take their time, and the shots are quite relentless. So. It's not the end of the world, because there's only two of them in this room, but sometimes it just gets a bit annoying, doesn't it? Uh, so if you didn't pick up the Morphal Bomb, and you wandered into this room, well, now's, now's your tell that you, you can't continue. Uh, you also notice there's this going on. Target is in a state of dimensional flux. Ooh. 50% of its component atoms are in another dimension. Or on the surface of Dark Aether, one of the two. Which is weird, because you think you'd go to Dark Aether and then 50% of the atoms are over here? But, no, it's basically telling you it's in Dark Aether. More lore, the main energy controller was built in the Great Temple. Three subcontrollers were built in the temples of Torvis, Agon, and Sanctuary. They collected the energy of Aether, then radiated it all over the world to all who needed it. In time, we came to call this precious energy the Light of Aether. It brought an age of peace and prosperity to the Luminoth. Oh, you thought the Light of Aether was something spiritual? Nah. Make your technology spiritual. Um, keep your eyes peeled for... I guess we can't see it just yet, but... Bomb slot, so... Um, but yeah, I saw a take that basically uh, made the claim that... There's a lot of AAA games where the writing is sterile. As in, characters talk to each other, but they're all sort of this campy... Or corporate kind of positive dialogue. It's like... It's like when someone's like, oh, you know, like... Like, the way you chat to your mates, and you're like, someone says something, and you're like, oh, like, you know, they're out of line. You know, you might, like, you know, chuck an insult, or, or just a, you know, a fun kind of just, like, quick line. Like, just, just something harsh, but it's like, you know, it's in jest. You've got your tone of voice and all that. You know each other. Um, but in lots of pieces of media, but especially video games, you may notice that quite a lot of the writing doesn't exactly express, like, a very passionate or deep sense of connection it's just like ah you know like instead of like that quip or or insult it's like oh one of these days you're gonna feel sorry for that like it's like that it doesn't feel like people really like get at each other in quite a lot of these games and the claim that they said was like his spider-man miles morales which i haven't played <laughs> yeah a bit of a spongebob moment yeah uh, but here's spider-man miles morales which isn't that new of a game? Also, yeah, scan these guys, because they're a bit cheeky. Bill bugs. Very nice. Um, also, I love these uh, little morph ball sections. I just want to reiterate that. Um, once you've uh, blown up all three of these, you have done the puzzle, which has been aligning all these uh, little mirrors. This causes the power of the sun. This is how uh, you shine the light to find the Ark of the Covenant. Well, it powers that thing, and that thing is wired across the room all the way to power this 
neat little thing at the other end. Okay. Um, but he made the case that, like, every single character, like, the way he talks to his friends, to Peter Parker, to, uh, all of... Actually, it's everyone to everyone else. Also, don't look at the sun because it will blind you. Ah. <laughs> um, he said basically everyone talks to each other the same. And that is a symptom that game writing is a bit lazy and a bit sterile. Um, accurate to real life, man. <laughs> yeah, true, yes. Uh, but I think to be constructive, I'd probably say... Yeah, I was going to say, not the, not the Spider-Man writing, yeah, the, the sun blinding, yeah. Um... But to be constructive, I think the thing that I would probably get out of it is that there's a lot of writing in games that isn't, like, acted or bounced off multiple people. Also, this is a portal. We finally got there. Now we're into the game. We finally got into the whole going through portals business, which is sort of one of the core bits of the game. Uh, everywhere in Dark Aether is just a mirror of an existing place in the Light Aether. And not everywhere in the Light Aether has a Dark Aether equivalent. There's a couple of hallways and things where there's just no Dark dark room. So uh, this generally leads to the Dark Aether rooms being offshoots of the Light Aether world a bit more. So don't think of it too much as Light World and Dark World and having to do all these like complex puzzles. But the atmosphere is dangerous. So just note that. You will see uh, these uh, blade pods. They're just for healing. Uh, wander forward and you'll notice your health goes down. Oh no! But stand within these light crystals, and you'll be healed slowly, very slowly. There's these light beacons as well, which you have to shoot, and then you can go through them. Uh, that object that was in Dimensional Flux is clearly hinting that somehow it's 100% here. And we get this fun little bit of tell that you're forced to witnessing, which is this gate seems to open up twice. Hmm. Trans-dimensional activity. Ooh. So, just, uh, yeah, mentally not that. Uh, if you picked up the extra, um, real friends never, yeah, real friends never criticize, yes, exactly. Um, oh, what the heck, man, I'm trying to scan you, and you're doing that. So, little inglet, sometimes enemies die when they touch the light. It's a bit of a shame. Uh, wander through here, and, uh, we've got another hallway. This is actually a little fun hallway, because this was a lot like smaller in the uh, in the light world and you'll spot all these uh, things these are ing barbs or night barbs so there you go but there's a save point this save point may look familiar it's almost like the only save point we've seen in this place not all the time is a save point in the light world in the dark world in the same place so just keep that in mind but quite often points of interest in the light world means something in the dark world, and you can actually swap between the light world and the dark world version. So where I skip that one room, you can see we've got the connecting room there. So that's fun. Let's continue on because the game is very nice at like leading you around the right way. Uh, you could go right, but uh, this ledge actually doesn't have a bridge. So you'd be a little stuffed when you get there. But fortunately, they've got some ledges over here that you can go up. Also, check it out. It's a... Uh Hold on. It's a big boy. It's a big boy. So, you think this guy is actually that terrifying, but he's actually not too bad. He does have these uh, shots, though, and you're going to need to just dance back and forth a bit to try and dodge him. But given that those shots don't deal too much damage, and you're standing in something that is healing you passively over time, they are cool. I love the, the whole, like turning into goop and crawling around the place. I actually, I wrote, like, uh, when we were doing, like, uh, writing in, uh, primary school, I was deeply intrigued by this whole, like, traveling to different dimensions and just this, like, liquid monster thing that's, like, part of the shadows. Oh, yeah, 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 those, the shots are cool as well. I thought that was real cool, so. There's this thing called Lightbringer. I'm the Lightbringer! <laughs> um... Uh, yeah. Now there's a portal in there. Um, forget that portal exists. I well, you can't because it's on the map. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun that we navigate around the room slightly differently to how we did before. That's the that's the fun part about the Dark World is that you'll notice. Yeah, there's a lot of similarities. I'm sort of wandering through the same room, but then you'll go through here and you'll be like, oh, that's a bit different. <laughs> that's not the same as what was there. And uh, that, I, that's the fun part about the Dark World, is that think of it as a complement 
to the light world. We navigate into this room again. I've got this like whooshy kind of thing. And check it out, it's another one of these dudes. But he's special because he jumps. He's like jumping into space. Almost like he has space jump boots. That's right, it's the jump guardian. It's like, it's, 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 we fought one ing. And now it's like, yep, yeah, no, boss time. <laughs> boss time. Boss version. Uh, he does, and again, you know, he's his own enemy, technically, so... He does ing things, but then he jumps up onto this high ledge and kind of feels a bit annoying. Uh, this one is great fun to do the speedrun time. Um, by great fun, I mean a bit annoying. Uh, watch out for these ground pound attacks, but other than that, you can spam missiles at him. It's probably the quickest way to deal with him. Uh, you can't constantly mash A to make your missiles, like, recount. Uh, but shoot these little caches, um, every so often, because as he's doing these jumps, he's actually, uh, you know, invulnerable as he's doing some of that, something like that, you see? Whereas, like, if you go, oh, you know, I'll smash that open, then you can drag the missiles towards you and then have a bit of a bit better stockpile, because I don't think there's really any other missiles you can get up to this point. I think you are stuck to basically those ones unless maybe you backtrack like there's a couple places you could backtrack once he's dropped uh, to half health and starts going a bit crazy and just wanders away immediately it's not too bad you could probably get him with like two shots before he moves somewhere else but when he's like up there it's like oh, what? <laughs> you can't deal with that Oops. Also, I just want to add some of the retro achievements, uh, leaderboards and achievements go off a very, very tad bit too early. <laughs> like, sometimes he's got, like, a little bit of health left. And, uh, yeah, nah, the <laughs> achievement goes off still. So, okay. Uh, and he's dropped, uh, well, everyone's favorite item. You thought this was going to take a while to get, but no, no, they're like, no, you got to get that space jumpers real early because... Otherwise, we're going to have a lot of environments that need double jumping and it'll feel kind of weird. So, space jump boots, they're yours. Very early in the game. No backtracking required. You didn't even need them in the beginning part, but you needed to have the monster steal them. Now, you could... Ah, eh, we might as well. We, we'll do it for showing off. We'll do it for showing off. Uh, there is not a particularly strong reason to go here right now, but given that the game was like, hey, go towards the dark temples, it would make sense to lean over to, towards here. And, uh, while for efficiency you don't have to quite go over here just yet, we'll experience exactly why, you know, the, the world is as it is. So if we go in here, we've got a door, and the door says, hey, all the locks are active, you need three keys. Did you pick up the three keys? No, I didn't think so. Go back. So, we can't have gotten any keys so far. Uh, there are, we haven't witnessed any keys. This is one of them. It's just right next to the temple. So, so really, you're looking for two other keys that are around. So they give you a freebie here. Um, for efficiency purposes, for like, oh, how quick can you beat the game? Now don't bother walking through here right away because you're going to need to come back here with the keys later. Um, but it's good to see and, and understand that right now. Uh, also, despite there being other doors, or at least a door to the north, you can't go up there until you've gotten all your keys, so don't worry about it. We're all good. Um, you may get a little bit of anxiety by losing health all the time in this game, by the way. Don't worry, but worry a little bit, but don't worry too much. The game is very generous, and especially you'll notice nearly every room has these like cache style things that will give you health. They will really give you a lot of health as you're navigating through a lot of rooms. So if you ever feel like, oh, you know, like, look, look, there's another one. There's one of these guys, and he drops light on you, and you could wait in this for a bit. But also, oh, look, it's another cage, and he's dropped a little bit more health. And, oh, look, it's another cage, and he's dropped more missiles. Like, they're everywhere. Uh, what is in the other direction? Oh, uh, one had the key. Um, the other way is actually not a door at all. It's closed off. In the light world, it's a door. But in the dark world, it's it's not a thing. That's uh that's just completely walled off, so. There are a couple of dead end rooms like that. Yeah. Uh, also, just as a heads up, there are no uh elevators in the dark world. So 
don't you don't have to worry about that um there's no going from the light world into another world to the dark world into another world like you don't have to worry about that you are in dark agon ways so it's connected to the agon ways scan the portal it's apparently research worthy and uh from this portal we shall navigate back into the main world that we are in the light world if you will so uh but yeah no writing in video games i feel like the the constructive thing that a lot of uh writers should do is to act out your scenes before you put it on paper like just Roleplay characters, we don't need to worry about these guys actually, I'm just going to wander right past them. But we've opened up this door, which the game is quick to highlight, and this is one of the cruelest things this game does. If you wander into this room, you'll notice that, well there's a bit of a half pipe, interesting, but there's a bomb slot. This is a barricade that you would wander into if you wandered from the save point room up. It is blocked on both sides, but this switch here lowers it. It's just a very arbitrary thing that blocks you. So, you have to do the lap around, and if you wandered up here, whoops. Also, if you don't come in here again, and you come back through there, it's still blocked off. You have to wander in here, pick up that missile, and open the thing, and then wander back. Because that's not the right way to go. The real right way to go is... Well, it's not the real right way, but we might as well be over in this room. As well as also pick up this missile, which is cheeky. You have to kind of squeeze in down there. Lots of missiles, though. We're getting there. But, uh, yeah, no. Writers should roleplay and act out their scenes and really try and get the timings right. Because I think one thing that really hurts a lot of these games writing is that the presentation is... Everyone takes turns like reading out their line and then something happens and it's like when someone's like you know like when someone says uh you know a line that's like shocking it's like you might hear audible gasps as the line is said you know not afterwards we've got a bit of lore by the way the starborn terror burnt through the heavens and struck aether with an untold might we all expected the world to shatter but aether held there was a great devastation, however. The green plains of Agon were scorched forever, and the forest of Torvis was engulfed and racked by the sea. The skies burned for days, casting darkness over the land. And we also got a little thing that you can scan here. Yeah, yeah, that as well. The, the writers do have to be good, and you'll definitely notice that there's... Um, like, I'm seeing clips on my timeline of a very particular game that I don't really have a lot of interest in anyways um but they're like oh look how cringy the dialogue is and i'm like i swear we do this like every like few months also check out this uh, little barrel here hi i wanted to aim towards that oh okay that's right it's everyone's favorite good old radioactive material now it's phaser <laughs> there's a little bit of phaser on this game not a lot but a little bit a little bit uh, do a quickie scan right here. Keep your scan visor out and you will quickly spot this gunship. There is a better chance to scan this gunship, but I'm going to do it now because you can. It's a pirate skiff. Sorry, not a gunship. It's gunships are a little bigger. Um, I also like how this whole place is on fire. Sure makes you wonder what on earth happened here. Which we'll find out in about five minutes. Also, yeah, one hour and a bit into the game, and we are in the only Space Pirate base in the whole game. Just chilling right here. So, one thing I kind of like about this game is that every single world feels like there's two ideas going on. And not just the light and the dark world. Uh, no, we've already scanned the pirates. These are all just regular pirates. And we've seen pirates already, so... We will see eventually some different kinds of pirates. Uh, we will scan these turrets, which appear in two sections of the game. These are cool turrets, I like them. Uh, they look very terrifying, but uh, fun fact, they die in two, three, three charge shots. Uh, the, the, I think the first time the space pirates appeared would be in the room, like two rooms back, but we wandered into that room quite a while ago, so. Also, <laughs> nice. The ragdolling is still good fun. Um, you know what's a game that gets the writing right? Half-Life 2. And I know Half-Life is like, uh, you know, it's Half-Life, of course, it's a masterpiece. But, like, think about it. You remember that scene earlier on in the game when you're about to try to teleport 
and then it all goes wrong. And there's a line where Barney talks about a cat. And while other bits of dialogue are happening, Alex starts saying, what cat? What cat? Like, just like, around, like, trying to figure this out. Meanwhile, other people are talking, like, there's real reactions happening while there's a scene and dialogue happening. And that's something that I swear so many games these days forget. You can't just take turns with your dialogue. You do need people to be talking over each other or say stuff like that. Your, di your writing needs to be a lot more dynamic than just it's sequential things set on a page. Wander right here, by the way, uh, because they hit another energy, oh, energy? Missile expansion over here. Also, I like how all these face pirates have wandered up through a little uh, portal that's up there, which, uh, well, rip. We can't follow them through. Um, I do like these wandering through the electric mazes. Also, Samus' face is the right way as she comes out of here, which is nice. I generally find that other than the, the like, the little annoying temple doors that stall you as you enter a temple, um, generally Samus is facing the right way every time you get up from the Morph Ball, which I think is quite neat. Um, we've got to deal with more space pirates. Everyone likes good old space pirates. Uh, there is another serious lore dump in this room. Uh, there's also a guy chilling in that room up there. You might be able to spot him. There he is. Um, but you can see here that this, uh, portal is inactive. We can actually have inactive portals. Uh, we have a bit of lore for Dark Aether, which tells you that this is a duplicate, and we don't know where it happened. But it's got phase on. And this is Light Aether. Or Regular Aether. We didn't add light to it. But it's unstable, so we don't like it. Uh, there's a lot of lore here, so let's read out the lore. Uh, a spatial anomaly has been found <laughs> has been found within our base. We believe this rift in space-time leads to a parallel dimension of some type, but have been unable to interact with it thus far. A strange artifact was found near the anomaly as well. It may be a weapon or generator of some kind. Perhaps it is the key to accessing the anomaly. High Command is eager for reports on the relic. A new weapon for our arsenal is always welcome. Black Ops 6 has the Dark Aether too. Ooh. Uh, the Rift Portal has been opened. The artifact weapon, dubbed the Dark Beam, by Science Team, provides the energy needed to open the portal. Although for a limited time, we've sent expeditions through the portal, and they have returned with incredible news. The portal leads to a parallel version of Aether. This Dark Aether has suffered a global calamity, turning it into a toxic wasteland. It is the homeworld of the shadowy creatures who have been raiding our base for the last cycle. Most importantly, it is the prime location of Phazon in the sector. Extraction plans are being prepared. We will not be denied. Perhaps it is a key. Yes, exactly. Uh, intelligence reports on the indigenous population of Aether are in error. This planet is not at peace, nor are the inhabitants docile. Evidence of a Class 4 conflict is present here, though hostilities are at a minimal level now. Our territory has suffered several raids by a strange type of shadowy creature. These raids have caused considerable damage, and we have requested more combat troops in response. So basically, there's going to be tons of space parts from here on out. <laughs> Actually, they, they chill it quite quick. Science teams have detected the presence of Phazon in the Dasher system four cycles ago. High Command authorized the deployment of our team shortly thereafter. Our orders are to establish a base on the planet Aether and evaluate local Phazon resources. Because this world lies on the periphery of Galactic Federation territory, we are following stealth protocols at the highest level. A cadre of elite commandos has been dispatched to provide security for our force as well. This operation is now underway. Um, yeah, well, they thought that Phazon was only on... Um, Talon 4, and it makes sense given that there's a giant crater that had the stuff on it, but I guess more places had that, which is wink wink nudge nudge. Uh, phase on extraction raids are underway on Dark Aether. The toxicity of the atmosphere has taken a toll on our workforce, as have the hostile natives of that world. Science team is preparing survival gear to protect our work teams, and we have increased our security presence in extraction areas. Fortunately, High Command is sending more troops and supplies. Our troops and resources are spread dangerously thin, and this mission cannot fail. Yeah, that's a lot of reading in here. I think you can you can read a bit more, but some of it is just like casualty reports, like shorter logs about like this guy went to a swamp, this guy went to investigate. Like some of the lore is a bit quicker than that one, so don't worry about. It. We'll read the essential ones, but uh, exercise to the viewer to read all the little tiny little bits and pieces everywhere. So, um, whoop, I had a. I hate this locked door they chuck on you right here as well. And it's only powered by that guy. Not the guy who's in the little, you know, dome to our right. Who will proceed to try and shoot out of it. 
I can't shoot it. He can. Hi, what are you doing? He's trying his best. Uh, wander through here and... Oh, no. Woo. Hello there, Dark Samus from Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. And then just proceeds to bugger off. More lore. Everyone likes more lore. Another disaster. The transport bringing out reinforcements and supplies has been shot down. It was engaged in orbit by a Federation vessel, which has landed near the alien temple. It's only a matter of time before the Marines attack. Survivors from our ship have made their way to our base. Here we shall make our stand. Another enemy. First the Shadowlings, then the Dark Hunter, and now the Galactic Federation Marine Corps. Perhaps fate will smile upon us before the world itself opens its maw and swallows us. What a fun bit of dialogue there. Like, <laughs> Space Pirates are like, man, the odds aren't really for us, are they? Sort of implying that they're not even, you know, the threats here. Uh, don't worry, no more lore for, well, the lore is much smaller from here on out because we sort of read like 60% of it just then. It's all in that first room. This is a bit curious, you gotta like walk out of this room and into the next one and back just to scan that one thing. Uh, but we need to get to that door without anyone interrupting us, which is not too hard. We don't have anything on the map as well, don't we? Nah. So, <laughs> how many maps are we picking up? Um, anyway, these turrets are called Humility Class turrets because you can humiliate them in a single like, shot. <laughs> and there's lasers! Very Mission Impossible. But yeah, nah, I, I don't know. I think also, yeah, this, this gives a bit easier to shoot from here. As well as also, hi there! Hi there, how you doing? Oh, this guy's weakened. It's a weakened Metroid. I guess we gotta we gotta find a regular Metroid to scan. No, that one's also a weakened Metroid. He's agitated, he can't enter sleep. We need to find regular Metroids to scan at some point. Uh there's a little elevator over here, so we'll continue up there. Oh, that would have been fun if that hit him. <laughs> oh, hi. You could walk past this guy. There's, there's nothing stopping you from just wandering past him, but... The ledge is precarious. Good thing there are no dark Metroids. Oh, don't, don't get me started about the dark Metroids. Can we even scan the Metroids right now? Don't try to tell me they're in captivity here. What if you scan this? Oh, more lore! Samus Aran, the accursed hunter, has arrived. The sudden arrival of the hunter is strange enough, but her actions are stranger still. She does not seek our destruction, but our Phazon. With each raid, she steals Phazon ore, only killing those who attempt to deny her. What she needs it for, we do not know. Though science teams suspect she requires it to power her new armor suit. Dark in color, it is equipped with strange new weapons. The troops now call her the Dark Hunter. It is a fitting title. <laughs> like, they're confused. They're like, oh, this weird little thing. Also, hi. Ooh, they fed him to the fishes. There you go. Real Talon Metroid. You know, from Talon 4. Dark Souls. Yes, exactly. Hi, Tower. Oh, <laughs> shooting me in the butt. This room is fun because why? <laughs> There's a lot of cool rooms, but <laughs> why? <laughs> it looks cool. So nice steam. Uh, this is a fun room. You'll actually notice there's a couple of these flying troopers who are in a cave for some reason. These guys feel exactly like the, you know, the first game's flying troopers. Other than body blocking each other, I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> oh, and they will dive bomb at you if you uh, take them out, so. But they're good fun still. Oh, yeah, yeah, it might have, it might have been a puzzle in the past, but... Yeah, right now it's not a puzzle. It's literally, it's literally one slot. There's there's other like points in the game where you do have to rotate things around as well. So it's just curious that like that one isn't like part of anything. Uh, so once we scan this, we activate a puzzle in this room. Maybe it's because they felt that this puzzle went on long enough. Because there's a bit going on here. So basically, we have these three pillars and a door up there. Uh, also, ignore the door, because you definitely saw that there's something up there. <laughs> um, 
So we'll go for that first. Uh, Speedrunners will find that there's a slightly better time to get that. I find that time is now. Hit this left one once. Hit this middle one. These are like up and down arrows, so it's quite straightforward. Hit this middle one twice. And hit this one three times with your scan. And now we have made a little staircase that we can go up, which is very cool. Again, first time playthrough, go for this. It's right there. You probably saw it. That's not a mystery that's there. That's <laughs> that's an easy one, so. Having three energy tanks is like, oh, a lot of breathing room now. <laughs> the game the game can go on, so. Uh, scan this, and we can now move this up to. Also, what is this? What is here? Ah, discipline report. They've been configuring power storage racks for amusement. Agility training is to occur only in sanctioned training areas. Oh, they're just flying around, are they? Theft reports. They've been stealing Metroids. How could they? Uh, don't need to touch the middle one and the left one. You're going to need to scan twice. You can hear the doo 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 doo. You know you've done it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Half-Life 2 should be an example of how games should really be pulling off dialogue. Having characters talk over each other and really giving that like, hey, you know, this is like, they're really chatting kind of vibe. Um, but so many games... I think coupled by bad uh, writers and also sometimes lazy technology. I think one of my favorite examples I always like citing is uh, Skyrim has also here's a room that involves a little bit of morph ball jumping. Should, should be self apparent by watching what's going on. Um, one of my favorite examples is Skyrim. It has a big problem where only one character talks at a time. All the time. And there's quite a lot of times when it's like a character is going on a very long exposition, uh, ex sorry, exposition, they're reading out like tons of stuff, and then they go like, you know, oh, by the, by the, 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 the Lords of Greybeard, like how, you know, how great is society, and then they wait for a bit, whoop, whoop. and then they wait for a bit, and it's like a half second, but a very noticeable half second when they finish their sentence, and then a character just somewhere very far away from them goes what like just like an interjection line so far later into the into the dialogue and then the original character turns around and just begins talking again keeps going on their paragraph like they stop the sentence and the tone sounds like they're ending a sentence and then uh they uh <laughs> they just wait for this one random line of dialogue to play so the Dark Hunter teleports into their base at will. Our security has proven next to useless against her. Her latest raid was disastrous. Not only did we lose more phase onto her, but she also crippled the stealth field generator with a strange new weapons. We are exposed. Until the replacement generator arrives, we'll be vulnerable to scans and detection. Our presence here is still minimal. Should the Federation find us, we'll be unable to defend our position. Fortunately, Aether is on the fringe of Federation space. With luck, we will have a stealth field back in effect before being detected. So that's kind of fun how... <laughs> it's just like, oh. That's how we know the space pirates are here. That's good fun. Also, convenient save point directly in front of a boss. So keep wandering around. And we've got one last room, which is a bit of a... That's not an enemy, by the way. It's just fun little bugs. Uh, but you do have two turrets, and if you missile this bit of glass, you can just walk out. Don't bother with the rest of the room. Don't need to worry about it. It's all good. Oh, jeez. I wonder what's behind this door. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What is happening down there? Can I join in? So, drop down. And we finally come face to face with our, our uh, nemesis from 80 minutes ago. I guess it's as good as mine, like, how this works. You just, like, suck it in, and then you're, you're phase-on powered. I love these shots, though. They're good fun. Oh. And now we gotta... Now we gotta deal with this thing. So... Introduce Dark Samus. Dark Samus is, uh, Samus, but dark. 
Dark Samus 1, you say? Yes, yes, I know. Uh, so how do you deal with Dark Samus? Well, Dark Samus takes miss- actually doesn't like missiles. Dark Samus will just deflect missiles, which gets annoying. Ooh, snap. What was going on there? I thought you said you don't like missiles. Uh, so just try to get for charge shots. Try to see if you can, uh, get Dark Samus while, you know, she's coming out of an attack. Uh, but every time she does exit an attack, she'll do this, like, dodge. You can get a quick hit just before that dodge happens, but you will break your lock on as that happens, so... Hi, hi. I generally like that she doesn't have, like, too many wild weapons as well. It's all stuff that you know as well. But, drop half her health and she becomes... Now I'm angry. Like, that kind of... That kind of stuff. I love the effect of her glowing and doing all this stuff. There's a lot of, like, cool effects and just generally neat attacks that... Dark Samus will do, um, and as well as this one, which is uh, definitely a weapon that we have right now, and we didn't even lose it to the Ing. They just, they just did that. Oh, hi there. Yeah, you could probably stall out Dark Samus a little bit by <laughs> just forcing her to do that uh, force field attack. Fortunately, though, Dark Samus is not very tough. Uh, but she does blow up. Ah. Also, this glass breaking effect is very neat. I love it. <laughs> and then she turns into dust and totally won't return later in the game. Side note, I love how dusty Samus is in this whole game. Adds to the atmosphere of the, the darkness. And we have uh, this reveal itself to us. Also, just before you leave, make sure you scan these pits. It's apparently phase on. Like, that's it. That's that's all the phase on in the whole game. It's just chilling right there. Anyways, head up here, and we shall find ourselves. That's right, the most important thing in the whole game. Right there. A log. That's 90%. We're right near the end. The local war has escalated in intensity. The Shadowlings from Dark Aether have launched an offensive. The assault seems focused on a central network of buildings atop a mountain. A base, perhaps. Strangely, this attack coincides with a rise in planetary instability. Perhaps these shadow creatures are using a new weapon system. The Shadowlings must believe us to be foes, for they have hit our base numerous times as well. We are holding, but attrition is taking its toll on our troops and resources. Reinforcements are en route. We can only wait and defend what is ours. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, introduce this. We finally get, uh, you know, the signs of a, a brand new weapon. This is the Dark Beam. It is totally not the Ice Beam, but reskinned. Totally not. Uh, but the Dark Beam is interesting because it requires ammo. It has 50 ammo, and as you shoot, it burns through the ammo. You'll need to use it to open things like that. Anytime you see a very white crystal of some kind, it opens. Every time you see a door that's black like that, you need to shoot it. You need to, uh, like, just use that. You need to burn through your dark ammo in order to continue through this game. And this comes, this introduces one of the points that I think some newcomers will get very, very, very intimidated by. Also, uh, this happens. Oh, I guess we can't scan this still. It's active. It's an active portal. Uh, shooting the dark beam towards these like inactive portals activates them and will allow you to travel through them uh, This is then where we get into the slightly more annoying aspects of the game, which is uh, not every portal is there on the other side, so uh We're sort of stuck in the dark world until we can solve this problem. So wink wink nudge nudge by the way um, But don't worry again. There's plenty of these caches everywhere. So We'll have plenty of things to um, to look at and work with. Uh, keep in mind, if you shoot the beacons with the, uh, Dark Beam, they become nullified. They'll get better after a while, but it's just curious that that's the case. Uh, oh, hi there. Let's stay up. Uh, you'll also find this one thing here. You're stuck in this one room until you realize that that breaks open and you can shoot your Dark Beam towards this, which then lowers. So... Navigating through the Dark World does involve solving and understanding a lot of puzzles and mechanics, which I think is... Uh, it's definitely, like, if you haven't been finding your energy, um... 
you know, your, your energy uh, tanks, then you're going to feel a bit of, you know, I guess, grunt here. Um, I think I missed a scan of my light crystal down there. Maybe I'll just wander back down for a hot second. I don't know, I don't know, health. Ah, oh, no, I really can't see it. Okay. Yeah, no, we'll come back for it. It's all good. Uh, wander through here, and uh, I like how, in the same way as the Dark World, you know, generally is like a twisted and dark version of the original, you'll get neat things like this where, you know, like, we can't go, or well, we can go on the top door, but don't go on the top door just yet. <laughs> uh, the bottom door is uh, blocked by a beam that we don't have, so we have to go backwards through the whole area. Now, if you want to go back to the light world, uh, you can't, because you can't go through there. But just mental note that that's there. There's nothing else in this room, so don't worry about it. Um, I think if you go up here, specifically try to get the crystal, the crystal scans. There you go. Light lift crystal. Yeah, there's other ones. Oh, there you go. You shoot it, and it becomes a dark lift crystal. <laughs> That's what I needed. That's what I needed to scan. That would have been convenient to just have that there. Um, there we go. Now, not every... There's nothing else I don't worry about. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, now, this was a save point in the light world, so that's nice and convenient. Uh, interestingly, there's no boss until the next item. Oh, so before the next item, so it's actually just a bit of a trek from this point on, but... Yeah. It's... One thing I find very curious is that a lot of these structures are... No, oh, that was a bit interesting. That was a bit interesting. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> That's on film, man. That's on film. Can someone explain that? What? <laughs> okay. Uh, but a lot of the structures are actually not really built in the Dark World here. Because the Space Pirates weren't here when the, you know, when the media landed. So everything here is just makeshift. That being said, there are still pipes and this whole cave is plotted out. So, okay, sure. Uh, you'll still have things like this. Fatal wounds, Space Pirates, but <laughs> hold on, what? Termination for cowardice? Ah, oh, rip. Rip that guy. Pour one out for him. Uh, this room's a bit curious, because there's, uh, three locks. You just gotta scan them. Yeah, uh, I feel like I've played a lot of games recently, but actually it's been, uh, prep work for upcoming games. Uh, Metroid Prime 2 being one of them, uh, the game I'm playing for December is one of them, and, uh, I don't know, I played Neopets Puzzle Adventure, I'm not playing that on stream. <laughs> I didn't actually like Neopets Puzzle Adventure that much, it didn't go anywhere after the initial, like, playing it a bit. Um, the achievement set is a little brutal, but I think it's okay, like, it's fine. I actually, I like those challenges, but, like, it's a bit too luck-based for me, so I'll, I'll be good on that one. Um, but yeah, no, if you like Reversi, you may like Neopets Puzzle Adventure on the DS, and if you don't, well, yeah, it's the whole game for that, so. Um, watch out, it's, uh, these things are not even, I mean, they're research, they're ing claws, they're like giant ing claws. I don't know what's up with that. We're just wandering around these rooms. <laughs> uh, I like how this is not glass. You can just jump through that. The water is a bit poopy, though. Watch out for the water. It is poopy. Um, you can shoot these, and again, you know, lots more health. Uh, we're gonna need to make sure we shoot these crystals, there's two of them in this room. I'm just hiding, oh, hi there. There we go. And if we stand up here and we just pew 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 out in this direction, you'll probably hit a lot of enemies and have the health just right in front of you, as well as also making this jump easy, because if you jump into one of these guys, it'll sort of block you a fair bit, which is kind of annoying. Uh, but here we are, we have the light beam. Spoilers. The light beam. Uh, so in the same way as 
there was a dark beam on the light world. There's a light beam on the dark world? And that's convenient because we totally needed a way to leave here. I assume the space pirates found us because no way would they have just gone to the dark world and then died. Like, <laughs> gotten lost. Uh, but yeah, Phazon is a, is a problem here. Also, these weapons may have just been theirs. So, uh, the light beam is totally not the plasma beam. Um, also, this clue here, defeat enemies with the dark beam to earn light ammo, defeat enemies with the light beam to earn dark ammo. This is a bit of a misnomer. The game itself could have been clearer because that's not an enemy, that's just an ink cache. But shooting any kind of cache with a beam weapon actually will give you ammo of the opposing beam. We'll try it again here. Uh, there it is. It drops out, so keep that in mind. It's actually very easy to, you know, to have your beams. Also, uh, energizing these crystals, like that, which counts as its own scan, by the way, uh, sometimes will just completely destroy the enemies around you. It's good fun. It does it particularly for dark enemies, like these dudes. Actually, they're, <laughs> they're harmless, but powerful in the light. Okay, sure. Uh, also, we have these weblings. It's like, it's like the previous things, but they have a creepy eye. So there we go. Anyways, wander around, and we will finally have returned back to the starting room. Where now, I shall finally grab this one item that's, like, obviously there the whole time. That's right, key number two is chilling right here. So that's all good. Um, now you may be wondering, okay, that's two keys, but where's key number three? Well, let's head through this door now that we've got this, uh... Fun bit, and let's blast that guy. Also, generally, you'll find that enemies in the light world will be weak to the dark beam more often than not, and enemies in the dark world will generally be weak to the light beam more. So you want to sort of keep your ammo supplies good, because uh, we'll wander through here, we'll grab the key, oh, never mind, never mind. Uh, this is one of the cheekiest scans in the whole game, is that locked door, by the way. <laughs> You're gonna... If you're going for all the scans, make sure you get that locked door. That's... that's a doozy. Uh, but yeah, no, this is a, uh, swarm of ing. Swarm of ing. Have fun. They gotta make you work for these keys. So, yeah, make sure you get the ing web, web trap there. And that's 40% of the scans. In an hour 42, which, granted, I guess if we're doing three streams, probably, you know, what was it? Eight hours total? Six hours something? Yeah. Now these guys die very quick. Also, you may catch them by just catching them in the, you know, in the area. Um, I think you fight four or five of these guys, so it's not too many. But you will run out of ammo, so make sure you, you top up. These things will actually fly towards you without even charging as well, which is quite nice. But that's what I mean, is that I think the best way to beat this game quickly is to really understand and master where if you run out of ammo you gotta pray that the game just gives you a freebie at some point the game can give you a freebie but there are times when you'll just be like yeah no nah, i'm out like if there's absolutely nothing left in this room and you've burnt all your ammo you can't leave you do get stuck and that's just to you know turn off the game good good luck bro um kind of moment and it's it's a bit uh, aggravating but that's the case that there is no like bottom you know like just give me like five bits of ammo just so I can shoot forward yeah it, it's a bit rough there's actually one point in the game where um I don't think we'll experience this maybe maybe in at the end of the second stream we might see it um but there's one part where it's like you go through a portal and then you have to go basically through like four consecutive portals and you're sort of stuck in one of them until you go through the portal again. Might as well check it out, it's a little, little tentacle. That's totally not the reaper vines from earlier, from the previous game. Um, anyway, yeah, I got stuck in that tunnel and it was like, I'm just out of ammo in this one bit, like, cool. So, um, so my word of advice is keep your ammo stocked. Always shoot things if you just see them around and you just a bit shy of, of uh, ammo because it takes one shot and you might get like 10 more from the other ammo type so it's well worth just giving that a go um hi there ing man how you doing 
Uh, so wandering up back through here again is where that one portal was. We need to go to this one portal. Also, just as a heads up, I might as well point out this room on the side here. Uh, there are a lot of... I mean, this is where we got our item. There are a lot of places like this. Which has a little thing. And this is, this is an ammo recharge station. It recharges missiles and potentially power bombs, which we apparently had before. Uh, but it also does recharge your beam ammo. So if you ever feel like you're sort of crimping by, keep a couple of these on note. Because you'll, you'll definitely want to remember that they're there. But the Dark World, I don't think ever has a map station. So you're going to need to take some guesses to you know, remember where the things are. Uh, the, the recharge station? Yeah, yeah, you can. So you can always revisit them later on. Um, but just note that that recharge station is in the Dark World. Uh, in this one room. There will be recharge stations in the Light World, and obviously Samus' gunship is generally in the center of the whole map, so... It's not the worst to actually navigate back to that. But you'll definitely find lots of uh, ammo recharge stations around the game. But, um... Watch how I'll play, and you'll, you'll see that it's actually not too bad. Also, keep an eye out, because this guy over here is a pirate grenadier. Now, you can also see that the bar is a, a bit larger. Also, uh, this is one thing I really hate about the game. Uh, there's a lot of... Ooh. Actually, we probably can't see any right now. But one thing that gets a little annoying is that you're going to see a lot of these one-way kinds of doors, where it's like it's one ammo type one way and then one the other. It's a bit annoying. Uh, but look, it's this turret. It's right here. You can actually walk into it, which is very neat. Um, so you'll notice there's a couple of guys who come out. But uh, yeah, you can hop into this turret and actually start shooting big explosives. Take out their wind turbines because stuff the wind. I don't like the wind. Also, the health doesn't matter because all it does is it just kicks you out of the turret and you can just hop back in. And there's only like three space parts, so... Um, your key things you want to shoot is, uh, uh, yeah, there was a big explosive in the far distance, there's one over here, and there's one on the left here, which is also a skiff. You want to make sure you hit all of those, because once you drop down from this ledge, you can't get back up, unless you go through the long walk again. Um, hitting this, uh, you know, shooting this skiff down allows you to double jump up here, which allows you to jump over here. And then allows you to experience the final bit of space pirate log because there's no more space pirates. <laughs> well, I mean they'll they'll appear from time to time, but it's like the this is the space pirate base. We just went through all of it. So another hunter wearing the traditional colors of Samus Aaron made Planetfall today. Horrific as it may sound, there are two of them now. We are bracing for a new assault. This dire turn of events may bear some goodwill. One of our scouts in Dark Aether saw a curious encounter. The Dark Hunter attacked the one clad as Samus near a phase on site. Perhaps they are not allies, but foes. Perhaps we can forge an alliance with the Dark Hunter in exchange. Phase on for the head of our common enemy. It's getting out of hand. <laughs> um, also, there's a fun little force field here. Um, but yeah, I love that that log literally came like right after the previous boss fight, so... Uh, also, check this out. It's another key bearer lore. My journey comes to an end. The thrice-cursed Ing prepared an ambush of singular cunning in the mining station. They caught me in it, in it like a neophyte fresh from the training halls. I have sent five score of their number to whatever foul pits they call afterlife. But in vain, my life is extinguished. Oh, poor guy. Uh, check it out, by the way. This is a beam ammo expansion. There are four of them in the game. And given that this one is right here, you'd be kicking yourself if you missed this one. Ah. But yeah, the beam ammo expansion gives you 50 more capacity, which early on in the game, that 100 is very necessary. I, I feel like everyone is going to just be like, yeah, no, you need that 100. So make sure you pick them up. Um, well, <laughs> pretty much all the upgrades in this game for a long time. It's like, yeah, no, make sure you pick them up. I think missiles awkwardly aren't that overused. I don't feel like I ever use the missiles that much because I just don't find them as strong as the charge beam anymore. Now super missiles we'll always need. So, Also yeah, uh, I, I didn't even mention but yeah, no, we picked up the third key so we can now navigate back to the Dark Temple or, depending on how you've gone about it, to the first time to the Dark Temple. Um, I know these are red, they're not scanned, they're just like, you know, it's just telling you it's a uh, it's a solar lens. Also, uh, these um, 
War Boss hides, I forgot to scan, so that's a good catch to remember that one. Um, interestingly, you're going to find various places like this portal which don't need the beams, they're just powered. And this one is very curiously powered on both sides. Actually, they're mostly not powered on both sides. It's because it doesn't seem like the bosses block missiles, but also charge beams like Dark Samus did. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that, that generally happens. But even then, you'll see enemies that, like, or bosses that just, they take missiles, but they don't take that much damage from them. Or, alternatively, they are very, very wrecked by, like, the beams. And you might as well just use the beams, so... Yes, I know, I'm watching my health. Oh, snap. <laughs> Come on, door. Uh, but again, it's like, oh no, I'm losing my health. Oh no, if only something dropped health. The beans. Yeah, the, be the beans needing ammo is how they get around, like... I guess them being a bit overpowered sometimes against certain bosses. Um, check out this dark door, by the way, because uh, that actually is the save point. It used to be a missile, and now it's a save point. How convenient. It's almost as if there's a boss right next to us. It's cl I, I love how there's a boss in both the light and the dark temples. In fact, there's a boss in every, like, light and dark temple. So why is the save point not consistent in this case? I don't know. There's other times where, actually, I think the other two temples, it's, you know, consistent, but this one is like, you know, don't need to be consistent, so. Anyways, let's wander through here. Head through the door. And since we now have all three keys. We can now open the door. Uh, keep this pattern in mind, by the way. This game's a little egregious with the key hunting, like, just literal key hunting. Uh, there's three keys here, but every, every world has three keys. And we're gonna need to <laughs> rinse and repeat this every time. Uh, check it out, by the way, it's a boss. The legendary sandworm. He's got an egg and a big worm. Everyone likes big worm, boss. Uh, so, uh... Welcome, uh, Amorbus. He's got a big egg in the middle. It's a power sphere. Strange. Uh, this boss actually consists of two phases, and you'll need to scan both phases. Check it. Oh, wow. Thanks, guys. I wanted to scan you, but no. Oh. Whoa. Should have kept scanning him. There you go. There he is. Oh. Never mind. He's, he's gone. He's gone again. Amorbus. I was going to say Amorbus, but... Oh, hi there. There you go. So this is a Morbus 1. Watch out, he's tunneling. Alright, how do you beat this boss real quick? Charge your light beam, look at your radar, watch him go, and shoot him once. There's no... He, he's gonna spit out, like, health, by the way, all the time. Scan him again. We are now in the second phase of a Morbus. Uh, where he now has armor and shoots things at you. How do you beat him? Whoop. How do you beat him? You shoot him with the light beam. He then breaks, and then it's like flagra a little bit. He <laughs> sucks you up, and then you more fall bomb him. And that was it. Fun boss. And then he smacks the egg because he's very angry. So, uh, but no, it's not the end of the boss fight. Amorbus consists of three, I guess, waves. Uh, each wave. Well, you saw there were three worms. Well. The second wave has two worms, so we need to fight two worms. It's the same fight, but a little different. Uh, you'll probably miss most of his uh, attacks if you uh, do this, basically. <laughs> if you're using the light beam, like, just normally, you'll probably just miss most of the attacks like that, because it's like he's just chilling here. Oh, hi, I hit his shield. Also, he is going to knock out some of the, um, the crystals. That's going to force you to wander around. He doesn't really hit you that often. But him knocking out the crystals and you taking damage from the environment around you is where most of your, your beef will be taken. So, um, there's nothing really too interesting about the, uh, the worm part. He just, you know, swims out and hits stuff. So, 
This is probably the most annoying part to... Ooh. That's a fun arc as well. Um, this is probably the most, like, normal part and the best part to probably use your, um, your beam ammo. Exactly. How convenient that there's enough ways to crack the egg. Now, it, once there's three Amorbus, uh, if you wait long enough, you will witness the most annoying attack that Amorbus has, which I shall show off here. It's, uh, lots of beams. This sort of forces you to wander around the field or just jump back a little bit. And I'm on full health, by the way, so it's not that bad. <laughs> And then he goes around the other way. Coming around town. Coming around town. Anyways. Fully charged shot. It's really not that much of a problem. If you're playing on hard difficulty, it gets a little annoying because they do take more than one charge shot. So. And uh, I honestly don't think there's actually caches anywhere to reload your light and dark beam ammo. Uh, because you don't need it. Because if you want to beat this guy like an ordinary person... Oh, first of all, if you're going to use the Dark Beam, first of all, the Dark Beam, as I said, it's like the Ice Beam, so it's real slow. That's not really a great representation of the amount of damage he takes, but, you know, you can use anything. Missiles work. But, like, note how quick that was with the Light Beam. It's just, like, a charged shot that actually homes in on your enemy. And then it's like, here, I have to deal with missiles and things like that, so... It takes its time, but uh, honestly, it's not that bad. One more crack, and it turns out apparently uh, the worms are very upset because they killed their own power supply and turned off. Okay, sure. Cool worm. And crack open the egg. We shall reveal everyone's favorite item. And by everyone's favorite item, I mean it depends on how you feel about it, but. One big improvement of this game is the suits, compared to the first game where, you know, you had the power suit, which is, well, the, yeah, the little power suit, which is fun, and then you got the various suit, which is the more iconic design, um, and then every other suit was just a recolor, which is fine, that's what Metroid's usually done, but one thing I love about this game is that Samus's suit here is very snazzy, and there's a real, like, air of you know, harnessing the the evil around you. Take a take a shot, by the way. Dark suit. <laughs> so, you can now see you don't take as much damage from the dark. It's still happening, but it's slow enough that you're not sweating about being outside all the time now. This really empowers you as a as a player to now suddenly, you know, the dark aether is not as much a threat as you felt it was before. And I love that it forces you into experiencing... Not to be confused with Dark Samus suit, yes, no, yes. <laughs> um, but it forces you into experiencing the pain of, you know, not having the suit at all, and uh, how come they still call it Super Missile and Power Bomb, and they're not called Dark Missile and Dark Bomb? Strangely not, actually. I don't think there is a Dark Missile in this game, so that's okay for now. Um, but yeah, here we are at the uh, the dark energy transformer. You just gotta drain it. This is technically using that item, uh, you know, the unknown blue glowy thing from the very first boss in the game. That's what this item does. It lets you drain the energy. It's purely there for context. But we're just like, yeah, no, Samus can just hold all of it. All the energy is just in Samus right now. And instead of making her more powerful, it's just a very big battery. So, uh, this is, you know, I praise the game for its, uh, for its, uh, suit designs, and then I will immediately rip into it because this is one slightly annoying part of this game, is that every time you take the energy, you know what Yumos said, he said, go back and deliver it to the same place in the light world. There is nothing in the way except for any times the enemies respawn, which is usually never a threat. Well, Samus is not evil, so she must not <laughs> use the Light Aether energy for herself. That is true. A little ink shows up here. Oh, three of them. Okay. Hi there. Oh, they're wandering around. I'm not even, like, afraid of you or anything. I don't really know. <laughs> it's not that the Dark Suit even, like, pro you know, protects you from damage or anything, which is not expected. I I'm not expecting that, but it's just, like... 
All these enemies are just like, ah, must, must defeat Samus, I guess. I guess they're already doing that, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it is exclusively, I mean, similar to the various suit where it's like, it protects you from heat. It, if you see how slow the health is draining now, because I was like, you know, losing, well, I mean, I got hit then, but like, when you're outside of the light crystals, the dark suit protects you more from losing health. It doesn't actually feel like it is needed for anything, in the sense of like, you know, Hey, if I never took damage, I wouldn't need to worry about it, and that's true, but what this does is that now it's like, okay, well, now you you play in the dark world normally, and then you use the crystals to sort of be a bit cheeky or lean some stuff around you, or maybe as a bit of a respite kind of area for, um, for working with the, uh, the, you know, figuring out puzzles or things like that. But when it's, yeah, when it's like, oh, I'm wandering around, you might see me just completely, like, just bolt it. I'm just walking forward. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I forgot to scan the uh, the dark portal, so I'm just going to casually make this appear again. <laughs> so I can scan it. I tried scanning it in other places and it was not a scannable thing then, so. But yeah. Uh, having to wander all the way back. Also, 61% of research. That's 44% of the scans in two hours. Most of the scans are very front-loaded in this game, and we haven't even gone into the other two worlds of the game yet. Like, there's still a lot of environment and a lot of things to experience, but because most of the lore is actually kind of front-loaded on you, you actually pick up most of it very quickly, so... But yeah, just like Metroid Prime 1, it's like, eh, you know, there are missable scans, so if you don't know you've missed one, there's a dark light aether and a light dark aether. Now we're going to get into, like, north, south, east, like, compass, like, you know, or it's like you got north and east, and then it's, like, northeast, and then you've got the subdivision in between. It's north, northeast, and northeast, north, and northeast, north is not a thing. I'm pretty sure you don't go back to north afterwards. It's, like, north and south are, like, key, and then it's just how many easts you've got. Actually, no, it's east, northeast, and northeast, north. Those are the, the two, the two divvying parts. So anyone who doesn't know, this is the uh, musings of a madman. This is like, it's like what are you talking, northeast, northeast. What are you talking about? What does it mean? <laughs> it's like when they found a new prime number the other day, and it's I'm like telling my mates, and they're like, "What a nerdy thing to care about." I'm like, "I know, it's cool." I am Australian. That is true. We need to know our north and our south, because how else will you know where South Australia or New South Wales or Western Australia or Northern Territory are? New Prime is cool. New Prime is cool. That's why I'm playing Metroid Prime, to celebrate a new Prime. Anyways, uh, Samus was holding onto that energy for a bit. She's held it in a bit too long, so just chuck it back into the energy controller. It's, yeah, it's like... Was it... It was a, a nine-digit number, that exponent. I'm pretty sure. It's it's a very, very big number. Actually, was it a nine-digit? I feel like it was a nine-digit. It was really big. And, like, when like if you were to try and write it out, it's, like, actually, like, hundreds of thousands of digits. Like, it's a very large number. And in order to prove that it's prime, really, you have to basically just test every... I mean, you can do the square root, because you can do that, and then you have to know 41 million... That is a lot of digits, yeah. Um, like, you do the square root of it, and then you try to find every... Uh, like, you know, you try to divide that number by every number less than the square root. Or modulo it, and see if you get zero. Uh, so when it's, yeah, when it's 41 million digits, then your square root involves 20 million digit numbers, I think. I think that's how it works. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of insane brute forcing, but that's, that's the joy of that system. They hadn't found a prime number in six years using it, and suddenly, oh, here's another one. They figured it out, so, very nice. Great job, guys. Is it a is it a waste of resources? Uh, we need to f keep finding more prime numbers because it's great for cryptography. But 
yeah, there's probably there's probably uh, more efficient methods out there than trying to like burn CPU cycles and in, in an attempt to find everything. But yeah, um, yeah, uh, we needed to wander back to the energy controller to just do that. By the way. Let's just train an AI model to... Okay, real talk, by the way. There's a new... Um, I think that there was a paper I mentioned a few months ago, which was basically we trained a stable diffusion model and incorporated user inputs to basically estimate where Doom goes. So given a screenshot of Doom and maybe some temporal uh, details about it and like player input, it guesses what happens next and it's remarkably all right like it's it's definitely close your eyes this is what your brain thinks doom is it's not at all the most accurate thing and there's a lot of hey the game state changed because it just looks a little weird um scan this by the way uh we've got oops oops that's the map uh, we're gonna read this out aether was fertile aged well with bountiful fields and oceans the native creatures were gentle compared to other worlds we had encountered we settled in a mountain region at first in cliffside dwellings in time we established settlements in the green forests of torvis and the fertile plains of agon a great temple was built between our three domains a place of peace and a monument to our accomplishments it was a time of harmony for our people very nice uh also if you're wondering what's down here because uh some people may Never realized that. Um, I did it. Yes, the Minecraft one. I was going to mention the Minecraft one. Um, yes. The the problem with Minecraft is that Minecraft is a lot more technical of a game. Oh, look, a map station. I think this is going to be a very worthless map station, by the way. But because I've never gone back to this room after getting the translator module like 40 minutes ago. Like, that's my problem with this map station. Is that it's a bit out of the way. I don't know. Um, yes. Uh, the, the Minecraft AI has no temporal, like, knowledge. That was pretty much the whole map, by the way. We sort of, like, you know, there's a, there's a room here which we can't go into just yet. There's a room down here that's actually where the light beam was. We can't go in there yet as well. Uh, there's these connecting rooms, which we can't go in. I think you can go into, but I don't know if you can actually, like, get the thing in them. You definitely can't go into that. Like, all of the rest of this place is kind of off limits, so we'll save it all for a proper revisit. Uh, we'll keep going on for a bit though, because uh, I've still got some things that I need to get done in the stream, because otherwise we're going to be, like, you know, we're going to drag this through a four sprint. Uh, four sprint? Four stream sprint. Sprint. I've been doing too much sprint talking at work. Sprint, sprint, sprint. <laughs> get stuff done before the sprint. Are your story points accurate? Like, oh my gosh, look. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, I got there. But, um, yes, no, so the, the Minecraft AI, one is very neat because they have an in-engine, sorry, an in-browser uh, like, way to play it, so you yourself can actually toy around with this. Um, and two, Minecraft is very technical, and what this thing is, is sort of showing where all the gaps are, and how to make this stuff work. Is it practical? No. We probably should never be actually playing games through, like, AI estimated content. But one thing I could maybe imagine this would develop into is... Also, uh, for reference, the next step is to walk all the way back to Umos himself. Like, it is such a trek back. It's it's a real, a real trek. Um, I read it so many story points. It's such an epic. Exactly, exactly. Um, you can hit this, by the way, but we don't need to yet. So, keep that in mind. Uh, one thing you can do, though, is you can actually jump up on this ledge. And you'll wander around, and uh, we'll find a little tiny hole. I like these little tiny holes. They're always good fun. Not a missile. Uh, so, yeah. So the so the Minecraft thing, it's it's more technical in the sense of, uh, yes, yeah, so you can move the camera around in two axes, which is more than Doom could. Uh, and as well, you've got complex things like hitting the inventory key and having items that are literally invisible from you suddenly now, you know, or like, as in, the items in your inventory are hidden from your player view until you open the inventory and you see it. And you can easily just hit open and close the inventory and wait a few seconds each time and the game just will not remember what's in your inventory because it can't. But it does remember what's on the hotbar. It actually is really good at mapping going from, like, items on the hotbar to being on the hotbar in the inventory screen. It's actually really good at that, so... 
and there's a lot of things that I think are really cool in how it um, hand. Oh yeah, sorry, the thing you can do. Uh, what 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 I hope that this technology gets used for is um, turning visuals and inputs of games into understanding the rules themselves. And the thing that I think is really neat is that hey, yeah, it understood. Also, there's a cheeky um, item over here. We needed the morph ball bomb, so that's why I didn't grab this earlier. But uh, just wander through this fun little track up here. It looks confusing, but. Trust me, it just gives you the missile. Also, we haven't gone very far. We're literally just on top of here. <laughs> just a snaky little little tube. That's fun, though. Um, but uh, there's other things that I think is neat. It's done a very good job at understanding, like, mining objects. You hold left click and the object starts digging and then it drops a block. Although usually that block is cobblestone because I think that's probably where most of the training data was. Um... It understands... Uh, one thing I saw it understand was it understands sand and how it should fall. Which is a very, like... When you think about it, like... If you were just dreaming up Minecraft, you may not have actually... Been, like, thinking of how sand falls all the time. Maybe you do. Maybe you use it a lot. But, like, that's an interesting one I thought it picks up on. I was like, oh yeah, the sand falls. Uh, it knows that when you stand in lava, you get set on fire. It knows generally that lighting works. Um, there's a lot of cool things about it. I thank you for restoring energy to the Temple of Agon. You're welcome. Your valor honors the Luminoth, those who have passed, and those who remain here under my protection as they sleep in deep stasis. Ah, so he's not the only one left. Be on guard, for the Ing do not suffer defeat lightly. They will surely seek revenge for your actions. With the energy lost from the desert region, they will increase their efforts in other lands. I have detected unusual amounts of ing activity in the Torvis sector. The enemy is on the move. The swamplands of Torvis are treacherous and can hinder you considerably. Bear this in mind as you move through the bog. Seek the Temple of Torvis. More knowledge awaits you there. May the light of Aether serve you well. I actually don't think there's actually a requirement to go and visit Umos, but you have to go into the temple anyways because of the way that you know they put all three well i know there's four translator modules but like they put three translator modules in here that require you to basically have visited the other land first and before you go oh but what if i didn't pick up all the items you will be immediately tested on that like right now <laughs> you you will be tested on that I actually wonder if you could, like, get yourself stuck by accidentally, like, coming back here without the light beam, and then you... Ah, oh, never mind! They test you right now. That's what these are. These need the, the light beam. So... Oh, look, it's a reused enemy. No, it's a Harmony class drone. It's not a Pulse Bomber. It's another enemy. I don't care that they fly towards you when you're charging your beam. It's a completely different enemy. So... I like how uh, this route as well is not the route we were in before. They put a, a wall right behind where we were as well, like when we first entered this great temple. It's, it's kind of annoying, so... But yeah, no, the, the Minecraft AI thing, I think, is very neat. Certainly experimental as heck. I would not expect, like, a real, like, commercial product to be made based on that. But certainly researchers are going, like, hey, you know, like... The fact that you can understand what it's doing... And I'm gonna interrupt this with some more lore. In time, the roar of a wounded planet subsided. The air, though fouled, was breathable. Light made its way through the dark veil over our world. Slowly, we ventured out from the shelters of our homes to see what remained of our paradise. What little comfort we gained by surviving was soon shattered. For when we looked outward, all we saw was devastation. Half of the planet's energy had vanished from the energy controllers. Aether became violently unstable as a result. Of the stellar object which struck our home, there was no sign. Yeah, it, it's cool tech, so definitely go look out for it. Uh, people watching reruns in like a year's time, I don't expect that website to be up for too long. But you know what's cool about this? You can run it yourself. You can run it yourself. I think, I don't know if it's as like interactive or whether you have to record inputs. I haven't tried it myself, but I have a mate who tried it and he said, oh, it only needs like six gigabytes of VRAM. So a lot of graphics cards should be able to give this a go. Uh, that half implies that it's probably not the most advanced model or trained for the longest time model out there, but uh, still, the fact that, hey, you could run it 
on literally anything that runs Minecraft RTX. Which is at least something, so. Um, this is the only time, by the way, we go into the Dark World in the, uh, uh, the Temple Grounds, or rather the Sky Temple Grounds, as it suddenly gets called. Interesting name. Um, yeah, it, it's a bit curious, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is the only time we really try to go into it. Um, you'll notice as well, the Dark World always has a lot of these just, like, oh, we need to block off this door. Ingworms are in the way. Sorry, guys. So. Um... But yeah, no, we need to wander this way because of that green door that we don't quite know how to open. I wonder what opens green doors. Also, check it out. Sentry Eyes from Metroid Prime. Be professional. Oh, I had one go where I jumped straight through that. But, alas. Um, more, more caches if you need it. Actually, I realize as well, I'm lacking a lot of light ammo, so. There you go, perfect opportunity. 25 more light ammo. Um, you can actually hug these as well, and you're technically in the light zone <laughs> right now. Um, this is a bit of an annoying puzzle. Uh, it's not, like, that cryptic, but just, you have to watch out for something. So, there are four bomb slots, and they each are, will wall off one direction, based on this claw. You have to go to the, you know, to this direction and close off three of them. If you close off two, you get yourself stuck and you have to unclose them and then wander around and then reclose them the right way. So doing it right first go just feels better. Especially when you're constantly taking damage like this. And you haven't saved in quite a while. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's always a bit of a doozy. Wander into the other side and now we've only got one of these to open up. So I think we'll keep going until we get the next item. I think that's probably the best place to stop. And that's still a bit away. Still a little bit away, so we've still got a little bit of stream to go. Um, but yeah, I like this platform here because uh, what ends up happening as you stand on this platform is that Samus is constantly holding R. Suddenly, <laughs> you're stuck still. And so just mash A. Mash A as you're looking forward. The camera even turns the right way as well. Just keep mashing A. Keep mashing A. You can look up a little bit, but A, you're fine. Just mash A. These enemies will drop lots of health. And you're also in an area that's healing. So then you're all good. And we can shoot this light portal here. But yeah. <laughs> the dark world for the, the temple grounds was very short-lived. But... It just serves this little interesting little puzzle. To wander around here. Now, again... We cannot return back, and you're actually stuck without going back, because, uh... Well, you can see on the map, it's a green door. Actually, not even you can see, as in... It's a green door. Can't open it. Can't open it. I wonder what opens it. Oh, well. So let's just wander through here. It's the same area we were in before, except now we have this guy. Let's, uh, showcase that this is definitely... Oh, okay. Hi. Sometimes you can ice beam these guys. Oh, oh hi there. And yeah, never mind. Light beam it is. So it's not the plasma beam, despite the fact that it burns enemies. Just, it's completely different. <laughs> so, okay. Jump over this ledge, turn around, or hit that, and hit that. So this wall open. Oh, hi there. Easy. So, that wall on the side opens up this, which leads to another green door. Can't deal with that just yet, but uh, moving this block here allows you to make this jump. Which seems a lot more achievable in the, in the dark world, wasn't it? They're really testing. You did pick up the light beam, which needs the dark beam first, so. But I guess they don't need you to get the dark suit first. You're going to be a bit stuffed if you don't pick up the dark suit, so... Yes, I know there's a hole there. We'll come back here later, don't worry. Maybe not in the stream, actually, later, but just keep mental note. If you see on the map, there's a little tiny... Little tiny, uh... Oh my gosh. There's a little tiny route. That's how you get back to the other side very quickly. We'll go there in a little bit. Uh, other than that... Oh, also, um, Prime 1 never had any cliffs. If you try to jump off the, um, the, the part with the Meta Ridley fight at the end, uh, there's just an invisible wall. This game does have cliffs. 
you can jump off and take 10 damage. There's not that many cliffs, but the fact there are cliffs is just a curious point to me. <laughs> Anyways, scan this and we shall have entered... The, I guess it's the third world technically because the temple grounds counts as a world. I find the worlds are like, yeah, they have two ideas going on. So we had the desert area of the Agon Waste and then the space pirate half of it. Um, this world is no exception, although I don't think we'll visit the second world this stream. Um, oh, I've still got Shriek Bats, everyone's favorite. Also, I forgot to scan, it's not in this room. Actually, there's a giant machine in here, which I always find is very curious as air purification. But it's not, it's not being maintained and will die. Just like your air purifier if you don't replace it. Mental note. Uh, yeah. We've got these uh, hanging pots up here, which is kind of neat. And uh, wander into the next room and we shall have ourselves our cursory glance at uh, the Torvus Bog. We didn't have a swamp level in the first Metroid Prime, so... I do like this Torvus Bog in terms of it forces you. It really does force you. Also, watch out. These enemies are just annoying. They pop out. And they're called Shredders. But they pop out and they sort of chill in there and then they maybe explode at a later point. There you go. Take that time. Uh, we've also got a little bit of lore here. Or is it Key Bearer lore? They came to the lagoon in the night, delivering the de tr true death blows before I could detect them. As my life faded, I sent a call to the cadre to warn of this surprise attack. May they find my key and dispatch the Ing who killed me. Only then will my final rest be peaceful. What an interesting uh, lagoon, he mentions. Have you noticed a pattern going on? Uh, check out this missile door, you'll find a save point. The Torvus Bog does have its fun synthy music though, I do like that. Uh, but yeah, no, the the cool thing I like about the Torvus Bog, and I actually, I really, this game gets better as it goes. Like, that's one thing. It starts off very Metroid Prime. But as it goes on, and as you start, like, needing to flex these, you know, these beam types, and all the differences start to come out, there's a lot of very neat aspects to how it all works and fits together. Um, is it genius better than the first game? I don't quite know, but uh, I definitely feel... It's, like, it tries quite a lot to, like, set itself out being different. Um, check out these guys. They're hidelings. They're actually, these guys are excellent for replenishing some ammo. So if you ever feel like you need some more and you're just in a room with these, easy. 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 Like, look at, look at all this stuff. Look at all that. Ammo's back. Easy. Um... But yeah, one thing I love about the Torvus Bog is how much it just forces you to just, like, swim. Because the first game doesn't. It barely does. You get, like, this little tiny bit in the Fendrana Drifts and then you're good. Um, these guys are annoying to scan because they keep teleporting. These are Shriekers. They basically say, uh, fire Sonic Blast and they, <laughs> they are stealth. So, time to ignore them for the most part. Um, there's also, uh, this thing? It's a crystal? It's just here. I think it's just telling you most what's happening, which is interesting. But yeah, head through this missile door. There's a lot of other doors in that room, but you don't need to worry about them. Uh, there's a portal here. Uh, we will not address this for a very long time. And we are back to the lagoon room. But now... Scanning this panel raises this bridge and basically lets you have access to two different doors, so. Serves as a mild checkpoint. Hi there. Hi there. I shall be leaving. <laughs> You'll find that there's a lot of these connecting rooms. That seems to be the structure a lot of the time. I guess Metro Prime 1 also had a lot of connecting rooms, but sometimes it would have connecting rooms connect to connecting rooms. Like, it felt like there was something quite... Oh my gosh. Um, it felt like there was something quite, like, cavernous and tunnel-like about lots of its structures, whereas in this game, no, it, every larger room is always connected by one and only one small room. Every time. That seems to be the case. I don't know. So, uh, this is an interesting room we've got going on here. Check out this guy. He's cute, I want one. And he totally doesn't remind me of the baby she-goths. 
Because he's only got... Well, I guess they also had two legs. And they... Oh, he zapped your bro! You zapped your bro! He's called a Grenchler, by the way. Amazing name. Uh, scan these as well. This is a bloat sack. But it's it's just, you know... Yeah. Uh, see if you can get your Dark Beam out and shoot him right in the rear end. Before his butt breaks off. And then he's probably... A couple of missiles away from dying. This is probably not a great use of missiles, but sure. I think it's fun anyways. Oh, I thought those were explosives, but never mind. Never mind, they are not explosives. Uh, this is an interesting room because, uh, well, we need to have this dimensional flux aspect come up again, so... Wander across the bridge and you'll find a, a portal. Shoot the portal, and away we go, into the portal. Whoosh. I love this effect. It's always good fun. Even if you can't skip it. Because it's technically a loading screen. <laughs> and welcome to Dark Torvis Blog. Blog? Bog. It's like the light one, but instead you have these weird blue things over here. As well as, uh, this dark sentinel crystal? It also tells you most what's going on, so. Anyways, we've got, uh, this... Ingusfircash, as well as this, a dark flogus, flogus. Uh, there is like no mystery with what you're doing right now. You're, you're literally like, well, this this uh, bomb slot was not in the light world, so let's use it. It then rotates the bridge in both worlds. Wow. Don't worry, the puzzles will get more involved later on. But it's just reminding you because we only seem to do that once, quite a while ago. We got some little mushrooms that lead you back up as well, so easy enough. Just jump back, and you're all you're all smooth. You're all smooth sailing. Whoosh! So this should now be as easy as you now go on your converted bridge. And hey, check it out! Oh, these guys are annoying because one, I can't scan them again. <laughs> This is Dark Pirate Commandos. These are actual intense guys now. They're not just Dark Space Pirates, they're Commandos. They phase in and out of time space. How do you take- well, first of all, don't get bombed like me. Or pelted with stuff. Did I just shoot him? Just- oh yeah, he is casually there. Yeah, they, they phase in and out of presence, but they're still there sometimes. Uh, but since they're Dark Enemies, they do take light shots pretty, you know, Pretty heavy, so. Hi there. <laughs> I was expecting you right there, wasn't I? Uh, at some point, they do bugger off, though. Oh, I did get one. Hitting it with a dark beam is kind of cool, though. <laughs> Hi there. How you doing? I guess I killed them. Sometimes you can take long enough and they just give up on you as well in this fight. But, uh, no, that's good to get them out of the way. I like how the dark enemies do come to the light world quite a bunch as well, so you are forced to just use your light ammo in, in the light world. Uh, but yeah, freebie missile. Always nice. That missile, we can't get. Uh, have an easy scan for an enemy we can spot right here called a... Orb. Dark ammo in the dark world. I don't think there's that many opportunities to use Dark Hammer in the Dark World though. So, Sporb, you gotta watch out, because he will shoot at you like this. You have just enough time to get the heck out of dodge here. Just enough time. It, <laughs> it always feels tense, but... You could play that a bit more carefully. Sporb. Uh, look at this wonderful item right here. It's a viable point for a grapple beam, but... I don't know what a grapple beam is. Like, what? <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, there's also a little fun platform here. Yes, it transports kinetic orbs. If only there was a kinetic orb weapon. That's not a sporb. Uh, this is the room we were in earlier, but now I have the ability to scan this one platform, which... Or this one panel, which reveals the orb cannon. Everyone likes a good old orb cannon. Uh, 
you can use this higher ledge to jump back to that light door as well, which is nice. Yeah. Also, check it out. I wonder what this is. Denzium? Oh, okay. Uh, there is a lower door. There's a reason why I haven't uh, gone through the lower door. Uh, and that is uh, demonstrated by this. So, we've got this wonderful walkway, but if you use your Morph Ball, you'll spot that this one has cracks in it. You can bomb it, fall down, there's an energy tank, and then you're on the underside of this area. And there's actually a couple of neat things on the underside here. Uh, if you had a weapon that shot through a green door. So, uh, this is an example where the save point is a little bit awkwardly far away as well. But fortunately, this isn't actually a boss technically, so there's, there's no retro achievements telling you off for not doing this in time. Um, but yeah, now that energy tank, it's useful, it's fairly easy, it's a little bit out of the way, you could probably pick it up, like, later, and the Shriek Bats always keep respawning, but, hey, if you're also playing on hard, I think it's worth it, just, you know, from time to time. Grab your, grab your freebie energy tanks instead of trying to wait for the very, very optimal point in the game to grab them if you're playing on hard, I don't know. People try to optimize the heck out of like, oh, do I pick up this item or do I pick up that item? That's that's always a, a toughie. Uh, well, we're gonna have to do a fight. There's no one actually to scan in this area. These are all just regular space pirates. Well, that one is. I think we get some some dudes flying out of there as well. Oh, there we go. People optimize the fun. That is true. There, and there are people who do enjoy the min-max game, and there's people who enjoy the speedrun game, and there's people who are like frame-perfect like fighting game players. They're always like the scariest ones to me because I'm like, man, I do not play fighting games to like. Well, not I don't play them as in like how dare you enjoy it like that. But it's like I I'm very inconsistent with my input sometimes, and I've actually gotten remarkably like chill and zen playing guitar hero now and that's taken like a ton of expertise from my end but like yeah fighting games are like man I, I basically have to relearn that all in order to make that work so uh we'll get there eventually but yeah uh anyways check it out they were just holding on to this the whole time You know, I might as well do one more boss. Why not? <laughs> Why not? So anyway, this is the Super Missile. It's the same as the regular game Super Missile. It's hold down A, hit Y, and then you'll do a strong shot. And it's actually a really good strong shot. And you'll probably be relying on it quite a fair bit. But uh, unlike the first game, they uh, made a lot of doors use Super Missiles. I guess it's like Super Metroid. If only we could open the green door. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All these green doors, no match. No match for the super missile. It's good fun that that's the case, and I, I do like how they managed to get to reuse the colors from the Super Metroid. Albeit, you have to sort of accept green doors and yellow doors, which sometimes show up, so... Anyway, scan this uh, terminal. This time it's right in front of us, as opposed to, you know, off to the side. A great warrior comes to the Temple of Torvis. May you succeed where I failed. I am Avok, the last sentinel of this temple. Heed my words carefully. As you can see, this temple has been crippled by the ravages of war. While the main chamber has been mostly preserved, the remainder of the temple has been flooded. You must use your abilities to venture into these flooded areas and find the keys you need to enter the Dark Temple. The waters of Dark Aether are foul and venomous. Avoid them if you can. I have updated your translator module. You can access device since the door is coded with emerald holograms. Search the area is now open to you. The Ing will seek your light with great zeal. Do not underestimate them. The time for talk is over. Good hunting, and may the light of Aether guide your aim. Thank you. I do need good aim. And like all 
temples, they replenish your health, which is nice, even though you're going to wander towards the save point. Also, check it out, there's a bit of lore right here, as well as also he's dead. <laughs> Signs of numerous ing possession attempts, all failed. Resisting these assaults would require incredible stamina and psychic durability. You gotta watch out for the possessions. Ooh. In time, we created machines to open rifts to our enemies' world. Volunteer scouts went through the rifts and found a twisted world, harsh and poisonous, a dark aether. They discovered that this world held the missing half of our planet's energy. They also saw the true face of the enemy, a race we came to call Ing, meaning terror. Our scouts could not survive long on the surface of dark aether, so venomous was its air. Still, we vowed to return. We prepared for war. Very nice. Uh, yeah, no, let's let's go on. Let's try and get just one more boss, because it's actually not that far away. It's a really, like, smooth walk to get to the next boss. Um, yeah. After that is one of the most egregious bits of backtracking I've ever seen. But I'll save that for next stream. But we'll keep going on. We'll, we'll get this boss done. Uh, this actually may be one of the harshest bosses in the whole game as well, so... Uh, but yeah, also I love how your health turns orange when you drop here. There's no fall damage in the game, that's just a really high drop. Um, this is a lift. It was a lift the whole time. There's a super missile door there, which I don't know if I'm even going to open that ever. Um, there's actually a purple door there, there's a green door there, which you can go down, but you don't, don't go down there. Uh, what about the green door we got in this little morph ball place before this room? The little morph ball place, uh, I haven't opened that. That's actually a, um, a map station. So I'm gonna completely ignore that. <laughs> but yeah, yes, you can go back for that. Um, no, yeah, it's, uh, it's, so go through the super missile door, and then it's past the T. The T means translator. Which it doesn't indicate which kind of translator, but yeah. It, that's a map station, so... But like, I don't know, you could probably infer how a lot of this map is shaped based on this. Uh, drop down here and roll underneath because there's a missile just chilling there. And uh, we can roll back. Watch out, it's a dude. Just go past him. He's gonna try and snipe you with the electricity through there as well. Oh, hi there. How you doing? Uh, they hit some lore in the, in the chain, in the hallway as well. We developed crystals that brought the light of Aether to the Dark World. Using these crystals allowed our warriors to explore the enemy lands, to bring war to the Ing. Sadly, the crystals were not enough. We needed stronger weapons, better armor. We withdrew from Dark Aether while our greatest minds devised new engines of war. I like how they're just like, ah! <laughs> Strange black creatures. Shadow, you can't say that. <laughs> Anyways, let's go to this door. Oh, sorry, disgusting black creatures, that's the line. That's the line. <laughs> oh wait, no, Sonic said that, didn't he? That's a Sonic line. What the heck, Sonic? Uh, so here's some even tougher enemies. These are the pirate command. Hold on, did we fight dark pirate commanders earlier? Regurgitator shot. We've done the reverse right now. So these guys are a little annoying because uh, they have shields. But fortunately, uh, super missiles are not their friends. Oh. They did suck my shot just in, but a super missile and a charge shot is pretty much all you need. Actually, <laughs> did I hit this guy? I didn't hit him like square on, but I don't know. it's not too bad. There's only two of them. Anyways, wander through this room. This is one of my favorite rooms in the whole game. I love this atmosphere. I love this like just void of fog and this random floating platform that's chilling back <laughs> listen if you see that platform you're like hmm, hmm, what's going on there that's, that's just one of my faves i just realized as well daylight savings has kicked in in uh the u.s so uh their their time zone's going all over the place this is a very funny time to be american because uh the u.s election i i, I know i briefly mention politics but then never provide any strong opinions but oh boy uh that's about to happen so for anyone who oh check it out as well it's a hunter Ing, my favorite enemy that's not really but i like him um hi hi what the heck uh u.s politics is what yeah oh but like a oh no 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 australia was a while ago we were like four weeks ago 
It was like the beginning of October. I, I did the first Sunday of October. I did my time change. I found out there's actually there's an island called uh, Lord Howe Island, and it's one of the very like curious places because it's the only place where daylight savings is half an hour. And that means that if you write computer programs that go run once every hour, you have to do a special edge case for Lord Howe Island's time zone. <laughs> because otherwise it's going to go weird. Or you just never run in Lord Howe Island. Or you run UTC all the time and you don't worry about it. Um, it's two weeks of stream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, uh, when, like, before I did Realms of the Haunting, or the, between Realms of the Haunting and, uh, Mario 64, I did the time zone, uh, daylight savings jump, so, um, this save point is conveniently close to the next boss, so, we've got that. Told you it wasn't that far a walk away, it's just wandering up north and you just go through the path that's natural, because, uh, what did we have in the light world? Well, a door that we couldn't reach, and then it's like, oh look, you can reach it, because there's platforms. And we're back in this room, which has a, you know, a object in flux. It's got these light things every time. Um, but yeah, US election, so I don't have any uh, strong, harsh opinions. All I hope is good, fair game, and hopefully people don't get too upset for very long about the results. No matter who wins. Uh, go through here. All I'm sad about is Vermin Supreme is, like, nowhere near... Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like, ah. Uh. We, we actually have, I'm, I'm not even joking, our free-to-air television channel is dedicating eight hours of coverage to this. Like, live on Wednesday, because it's Wednesday our time. Also, with arms wide open. <laughs> we haven't even seen the light, the light breed. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, the boss just ducks off in here. Uh, welcome to one of the hardest bosses for new players. Uh, you could tell what he does, because he boosted away in a little ball. This is the Boost Guardian. The Boost Guardian, you may notice, one does that quite a bunch. Uh, the Boost Guardian also uh, doesn't have any crystals. There are no crystals to fight the Boost Guardian with. But he is super weak to the Light Beam. Hit him with the light beam, and you will get also oh, when he turns red like that, then he's gonna he's gonna do his ball thing. How do you do the ball thing? Try to lay some bombs right where he stops. And try to not touch him, because it does deal like 40 damage. It's not fun. If he touches one of the pillars, it will always break and give you an ultra uh, health, which is at least nice. Oh, I'm trying to trying to get him quick. There you go. You can tap him like that and you can break him out of his cycle a little quicker. He takes like three or so, like rounds of bombs before he gets back up and then he gets back up and then you want to make sure that you're always on the light beam because you really want to also he's going to possess you like this your suit is pretty good at blocking him but it wastes your time and he's also hitting you as it happens so but yeah make sure you've got full light uh, ammo before starting this fight I think it's probably the best thing but he is going to waste your time you've always got super missiles as a backup anyways so it's not too bad on hard difficulty, yeah, it's a bit of a stretch, though, because there are no other beam ammo pickups to get. There is one beam ammo pickup in each of the four worlds. And we already got the one that's in the Agon way, so the one here is not accessible, so... It's just an annoying fight, because, yeah, if you're worried about constantly taking damage, or you don't know what you're doing here, he is a bit of a doozy. As well as also, like, sometimes he hits the... Like, it is really random where he bounces, but sometimes he hits these poles very early. And then it's like, cool, I now have wasted all my healing, like, right away. Oh, come on. Come off it. I, it's it's possible to two-cycle him, or even one-cycle him, I think, which I think we might need for the, uh, for the retro achievements time. Ah, I went into his phase again. And, I mean, I've got four uh, energy tanks. Uh, imagine the first... Also, uh, he's nice. He'll run into his little mini ings, by the way. And then they'll constantly drop light ammo. So even if you're not shooting with dark ammo, you will get maybe some 3D light ammo from time to time. Not all the time, but from time to time. It's, yeah, it's, it's like a real turbo boss fight, I'll tell you that. But you've just got to, like... 
be on top of it and just watch out for this pinball lad bouncing all over the place. There's probably an art to breaking his, uh, his run quick. Wow, okay, sure. Oh, like that, sort of. I, I'd imagine task runners on this uh, boss have a field day because there's a lot of fun things you can do with him. Okay, this should count as dead, I think, according to the leaderboard. <laughs> there he goes. Look at that, some free light ammo. We did scan it, right? Yes. <laughs> but there we go! We've beaten this boss. Yet again. Or not, well, I beat him yet again. That was the first time you saw me do it, so. And, uh, wouldn't you know? Well, he dropped a lot of health, so feel free to pick up the free health and stuff like that. Look at that, full health again. And we have acquired yet another one of our old items. The Boost Ball. These animations are neat, I'll tell you that. Uh, but yeah, no, Boost Ball, just like it was before. You hold B and you can boost. The effect is a little different this time. Uh, it makes it quite clear that it deals damage, I think, by making a big shock around you. Uh, around? Oh my gosh, I'm <laughs> I have a list now. Uh, use this to gain momentum, allowing you to boost out of here. But obviously, you saw that key that's right there. This... You, you don't miss this key. It's kind of annoying to have to backtrack here just to get that one key. It's right there. You might as well get it. So... Obviously, we know where this is going. Also, yeah, you can use the boost to get past that, so, nice. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a good place to, to call it. Um, we're gonna have to save point in the next room, so... Uh, and, uh, you can't move this just yet, so don't worry about it just yet. Um, but yeah, now we've got the save point back here, and I think this is a good place to call it. We've gotten, we've started the game, we've, uh, we've gotten... Uh, the missiles, and the uh, Morph Ball Bomb, and the Space Jump Boots, and the Dark Beam, and the Light Beam, and the Dark Suit, and the Super Missile, and the Boost Ball. Lots of stuff. This game goes very quick, I tell ya, but there's a lot of cool things in it, and a lot of stuff. So, I would highly recommend playing along, and I'll continue more later. Also, 55% of the scan, so if it felt like a lore dump, we've gotten through more than half of it already, so. Uh, and a quarter of the items, so. We'll go, we'll continue on more next week, but until then, thank you so very very much for watching if you enjoyed uh you can follow on twitch 8 30 p.m australian in daylight every monday and follow on youtube we're at 2001 subscribers we did it we broke the 2000 mark very happy i'm i'm happy about that uh how long will it take to get to 3000 hopefully quicker I, I got like about 150 or so subs in the year which is faster than i've gotten them before and yes, follow me on the Fediverse, yes, m.bndow.com, where I'll say things sometimes, um, so that's all good. Uh, I should probably have, like, a take about technology right now, because I'm still, like, there were, I, I've got a whole stream without mentioning Hardware Unboxed, when they said Raptor Lake was worse than Arrow Lake, and I'm like, ooh, that's spicy. I'll save my opinions on that for later, so follow me there. Uh, but yeah, no, other than that, have a great week ahead of you, do amazing stuff, don't stay up too late, eat your greens, and, uh, play this game. I enjoy this game a lot, so. Peace, peoples.